right, let's do a cheers to the Shelby's and Shaper Liquid Beer Podcast. Nine to the north, we ride again. <laughs> I love you guys. Careful, that takes off.
finds McDavid. The net is empty. Shoots and scores, and this one's over. Hunter. McDavid. Hunter. 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 McDavid. 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 Remember that name. The nation in love from Gibbons to Devon. Look at the past, team men on the ass. Second contract, a lot of cash. Tick, 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 take your time. With David on your team, and you'll be fine. Just open your eyes, and you will see it. Oil it for real, cause he has no limit. No, 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 no. Not. Dry. Not. Dry, dry, dry. Dry, 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 dry. Dry, 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 dry. Leon scored a goal tonight Watching him play is quite a sight You know this song is tight Oilers fans, come on You loved him endlessly Since he was drafted number three He's a center with a size That was born in Cologne Try to stop him, you can't do much more That ain't no lie You just want to see him shoot and score It was dry, dry, dry Dry, dry. Gonna make a fool out of you Probably score a goal and assist on two You can't stop him and that ain't no lie Cause it's dry, dry, dry Dry, dry. Don't even try to play him rough Leon is a German so you know he's tough Let's go! His hands are crazy and Aikens love his eyes Yeah, it's dry, dry, dry Dry, dry Gonna make a fool out of you Probably score a goal and assist on two You can't stop him and that ain't no lie Cause it's dry, 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 dry. Don't even try to play him rough Leon is a German so you know he's tough His hands are crazy and Aikens love his eyes Yeah, it's dry, 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 dry. Can't tell we couldn't stop the puck Cause it kept slipping 
dream. Oh, yes. So I kind of got a hat trick in smoking hot. Oh, yes. The winners won the game 7 2 4. Now we the series 1 nothing. Oh, yes. Hopefully, game 2 on Wednesday goes the same way. Oh, yes. It is now time for Lieutenant Eric to talk about the game with his guest. Let's go, Oilers. Let's go, Oilers. AM Nasties. Wow. How you doing? Good morning. Uh, Fired up. Fired up. Soaking wet. Uh, what a morning! What a night! What a uh, what a day ahead! Uh, this is the Nielsen Show, Edmonton Sports Talk.com, the iHeart TuneIn Radio apps, and as well on YouTube. How you doing? I know everybody's fired up. We haven't done one of those since the old place, and I'm going to safely say that this morning is the first time since we've started this new Edmonton Sports Talk operation, or I've kind of felt those tingly feels, much like the old place, much like the playoffs, much like we do the the songs, the bits, the sounds, the the smells last night, wherever you were, but we are here. It's playoffs, game one in the books, and what it was for the Oilers. We'll recap the whole bit uh, throughout the show this morning and throughout the day here on Edmonton Sports Talk, your home for the Oilers' uh, Stanley Cup playoff run. You can text any time as well, 780-218-9999. It's the Paris Jewelers Inbox. We have a jingle for that. We'll play it a little later as we did have a lot of songs, uh, courtesy Sportball and the Gold Songs, and a little jingle there from Atif as well, Wheels, the guy in the chair. Sent a few of those workings early on today told him to cut him down slightly but uh nasty chad's bumping along as well it's great to see everybody hopefully everybody had a fun safe night lieutenant eric in again dustin nielsen will be back thursday jay milne glue guy lead hand of the glue crew and zach come behind the monitors this morning boys 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 uh how are we doing today you're both we we're all at hudson's uh bourbon last night great event there uh, our est watch party few beers drank few uh I said I'm going to be eating a lot of chicken over the next couple of months in <laughs> wing form and, and what have you. But uh, how are we feeling today? Let's get a what's 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 the vibe check this morning? Vibes are high. You know the vibes feel like right now, Lieutenant Eric. You know how they feel. You know how else those, those how, how vibes? How lewd there, Jay? Yeah. You know how else those vibes feel right now? You tell them I'm coming and hell's coming with me. You hear? Hell's coming with me! So yeah, needless to say, we're vibing in here. Tombstone Tuesday, you know how we do. If you want the uh, text of the day, courtesy a and you can come get it. 780-218-9999. 399 stackers right now. Single, double, or triple. Lettuce, tomato, onion, pickle, and a new secret sauce. Going to go down smooth for you today to kind of uh, sop up all that booze hanging around your gut from last night, I'm sure. Treat yourself. The Oilers played a great game last night, taking game one, exacting themselves. Exact yourself today. Uh, get some food, treat yourself right, get yourself uh, back up and ready to go for Wednesday night as well. Game two back here in Edmonton. But uh, Tombstone Tuesday, Jay's got the clips. He's got the sounds. He'll be uh, hitting them up. Uh, you set him up, he'll knock him down that for you. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. Just like that. Just like that. And it's probably the, the route you would go for Texas today this morning. So if you want that 20 bucks to AW, come and get it. 780-218-9999 is the number to text. It's the Paris Jewelers Inbox. It's the bling box, it's the ring box, and it is, of course, the inbox. It's the ring box, it's the bling box, it's the Paris Jewelers inbox. And they got lots of fancy, uh, shiny things. Look at this, look at that! Not just for the ladies, they got jewelry for men, too. The ring box, the bling box, the Paris Jewelers inbox! Indeed. So come get that $20 to uh, A&W, courtesy our fine friends of the Paris Jewelers Inbox. We are, of course, coming to you live from the Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen studio this morning. We dressed it up a bit. I know Tom's probably rolling around in his uh, uh, silk uh, linens right now, but <laughs> we got the conch on there. Jay brought the uh, pom-pom from our good friends at William Huff. We've dressed it up a bit, and uh, the tombstone characters are feeling it. It's It's... I think yesterday, you know, Monday, game one, nothing, you know, there's that anticipation, the anxiety, the having to slug through those two final weeks of the regular season. Uh, but I think last night, judging by uh, the events at Hudson's, the Moss Pit, I mean, they're firing donairs into the crowd for crying out loud at the game last night. The cannon. So it's it's all a go here. It's, it's a carnival atmosphere. Can you imagine getting smashed in the face with a 
with a like a loaded donair, and it, just think of the you know the, the the sauces and everything that's it might actually do it a favor. Yeah, you know, you send it back. I wanted tzatziki on this. I didn't ask for sweet sauce. Tomatoes. Blah. Hey, you know what we're gonna do? This is what we're gonna do. It came to me here, and, and I think we forgot about it to be honest. But somebody said, uh, "Smash that likes up for glue guy shaking his pom poms." And if there's a day to do it, Eric, it's today. I ain't begging. We're going for five hundred. I the, said the it. Seven hundred. I say seven. We said seven I yesterday. There's got to be a day that we get up to seven, six. I don't care. Like for the Oilers, like for Jay waving the pom poms again. I'm not gonna beg you, but uh, we're trying to do good work here. And if you like what you see, how could you not I'll work it? How could you? I'll not? do this all show. How could you not? Uh, give us a like. Hit the sub. Create various accounts. Log back in. Hit the like again. Just like you're probably doing the Vegas keyword. I know a lot of you have friends out there doing the call. And, uh, you know, maybe that's how you got to get the like thing juiced up as well. Too. What are you doing here, Zach? You got a big uh, announcement as well. I think uh, maybe we should uh, share that before we should get we going. Should we delve into that? Let, let's just oh, rip yeah, this yeah. band aid off. I teased it in the nasty chat, but Zach Dickum, um, fresh off getting your, uh, you know, uh, we had your hiring here live on the show, uh, but another new uh, nugget of news for your career here, your burgeoning career at EST. Yeah, of course, uh, you know the VIP golf show is coming back to Edmonton Sports Talk, of course, and I'll be producing that one, so I just want to say that. That's Sunday, 8 a.m., up bright and early. Let's go. Yes. Look at that. Zach on the VIP golf show, Murray McCourt. And that'll be Sundays. That returns to Edmonton Sports Talk, so congratulations, Zach, and we'll... Uh, We'll wish you the best of luck there, and I'm sure you're going to just smoke it and kill You know, Murray already, old Murdoch, hey, you two can... Oh, yeah, yeah, we could chef there, it yeah. up. Oh, yeah, Absolutely. we'll be cooking. Yeah, way to go, Zach. Attack comes in from Joel, so congratulations, Zach. It's it's just, on the heels of last night, I think it's nice to have a little job announcement here for uh, Zach to come as well uh, during the morning. Let's just set things up for you. We'll, we'll uh, dive into the morning after show here in a couple minutes after I read you the menu here, but uh, we will have TSN's Darren Dreger as well, brought to you by Pro-Am Sports, who will be discussing last night's Game 1 here in Edmonton, Kings and Oilers, another Game 1 going on uh, in the West uh, that we're keeping our eyes on as well. An interesting one of the few uh, a few names popping up last night, so we'll, uh, we'll dive into that and the whole NHL Stanley Cup playoffs picture. Cool, but Canada hotline of the day. That's to come at 720. Jason Mill might have a little something cooking. A lean, maybe a sprinkle. Cooking, cooking. He's cooking. Uh, weekly Confessions, Spectrum Rental. Uh, we'll have that coming up at 730. So if you have anything you'd like to get off your chest, confessions-wise, it's a safe space. Uh, please feel free to do so. 780-218-9999. I do think, Zach, you, you said, too, you had a confession. Did you know? You've been a... You've been a bad boy. I I got a couple in the a in couple. the bank. I got a couple on my mind. I yeah. might have to vent about those. Yeah. yeah. Yourself, Jay? Are you? Uh, it, it's sometimes it's nice to come to a confession and say, you know, what? I got nothing. To I confess. actually it's have fine. a that real could be a, confession. a real. This is not a bit. This this one is like bit. This is real, and it it's. I don't know. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna lean on my two my two yeah. fellow co-workers here to try get me through this and try get me. Try find some some rationale to what I'm going through because it's heavy, it's hot, it's deep, and uh, and and it might actually, you know what? The thing, the beauty of it is that it's going to get resolved today. Heavy, hot, and deep, and it's getting resolved. Did you order one of those big pizzas again for Big Mamas and Papas pizza? I may have. I may have. Is it a furniture? You tell them I'm coming, and hell's coming with me. You hear? <laughs> hell's coming with me. That's how I feel about my confession. Or does, my, does it uh, have something to do with furniture? Is this, is this a furniture? Furniture? No, 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 no. Nope. Has somebody has something to do with somebody else that is in this office. Ooh, That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> oh, okay, well, more on that. 730 weekly confessions for uh, Spectrum Rental. I know they always like to uh, get in confession as well, so we'll await them. The Fly YEG word for Vegas, the key word, final week of qualifying. We want to send you down to Vegas. It's nonstop flight, courtesy of our friends at Fly YEG. Two nonstop flights there and back, three nights accommodation, tickets for a Cirque show, and uh, it's all presented by Fly YEG and the LVCVA. Uh, for more, www.flyyeg.com. But that key word, a funny word today as well, uh, that'll be coming up at around 7.40. So be by your phones then. We'll be calling a winner probably sometime before 8 o'clock. The final hour consists of kind of easy trivia for Mr. Mike's. Three questions too many. Brought to you by Park Mazda. Joaquin Gage uh, will be by at around 8.30ish. Our, uh, brought to you by Pro-Am Sports as well. And the wrap coming up for William Huff. Uh, of course, they've uh, decorated this uh, fine studio here with a few of those playoffs. Zach got the pump. Zach, get that pump. Get that pump. 
pom pom back up. The, the, oh, Papa, that Hyman scoring another hat trick or what? Where we got that pom pom on the floor? By the way, did you uh, did you lose a hat last night? Chime in if you did. Uh, we might have found out where they are. Those uh, bags and the the annals of uh, Rogers Place. There, uh, a few media folks taking pictures of those. But uh, I mean, I think uh, look, Hyman, the 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 season he had with the goals and everything. And getting that hat trick last night, what a statement. McDavid, five assists. I mean, that's pretty much the regular season in a nutshell, carrying on to the postseason. Well, I think we were sitting, you know, relatively in, in striking distance of each other. And, and I know Maddie was there. And I, I believe I might have said to Matt, I don't know if uh, you might have been over with, with some of the others, but Hyman scored early in that first period. And, and I said to Matt, well, that's a good sign. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it really, yeah. really literally is. Your leading goal scorer from the regular season campaign obviously is carrying that momentum through which is a good thing i yeah. mean that 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 can only mean uh positive things moving forward and and tr to be honest that that first line was was rather dominant um yes i know they took a couple uh they had a couple goals scored against their line and and i don't know that it was necessarily that the the oilers fell off in the second period, or that LA just got a little bit more desperate and started throwing I think you everything expect towards a counter. the net. Yeah, you, you got to expect something—a push from them a right? bit, but a few lucky bounces for them and a few greasy goals, you could argue. And and you know what's interesting? I was listening to the post-game show. Actually, I listened to it this morning on my way in because, uh, as you know, it would just been much too late to try and accomplish anything last <laughs> night. Um, but uh, Matt Cassian made a great point <clears throat> in saying that. Having this game end up seven to four, as opposed to six one or six nothing or you know, okay. seven one, might be a little bit of a blessing in disguise for the Oilers. Given that you know, if it was a six one game, L the Kings are more likely to, to just you know bundle this thing up and scrap it. Say throw the tape out. We don't want to look at it. Go go home, have a shower, forget about this game. Knowing now that they had a sniff, they got back involved. You know, we'll maybe keep them in, in the mindset that they have a, you know, that, hey, maybe we didn't play so bad tonight, right? Whereas, you know, getting totally demoralized by a blowout win might have a different effect in the locker room. Yeah, it's a strange one looking at the score, and you can, you can say, you could argue that it flatters the Kings in a sense with those goals, but you're right, just looking at it, it's not something that jumps out on the page, wow, total dominance. So maybe there's something there that the Oilers can kind of work off of as well. I do think, though, this group, and judging by some of those post-game comments in the locker room last night, it does seem like a group that has aged, obviously, and another year older and another year experienced with this process. But the taking it a game by game, um, exerting their game early on, pretty much kind of, you know, dog wagging the tail. There's no tail wagging the dog here. They're the top dog. They're going to wag the tail, and everybody else is going to fall into form. And I think that's kind of what you saw last night. Um, 7802 I know people in the uh, nasty chat are all over that Telba chat last night. And, and of, as far as goaltenders go, the perfect name for a chant, especially your drawn-out, you know, Syllable. Yeah. That, that, he, he's got it. He's, he's got yeah. it. He's, I mean, Cameron, Cameron would be a close second, but uh, <laughs> yeah, tell, but uh, uh, good chant there. So it looked like it was great. If you're at the game, let us know. I um, want to thank as well all the Nasties showing up and uh, coming out last night to Hudson's Bourbon Street. Uh, great staff there as always as well. I love now that I can, it's been a couple of years, but I know that I can now walk back into Hudson's Bourbon Street and they say, hey, Bale House Ale, right? Pint? And I'm like, yes. So I'm back, baby. I'm, I'm back at a place where they know the drink. And you walked in. It was a Norm from Cheers moment, I think. I think it was. it was. It was made my heart just flutter. Glue was, crew it, was there welcoming the Glue crew in was and, outstanding. Uh, um, they're in, in full force last night, so that was nice to see. I had uh, a, a, probably a, a – I asked for a, a glass of Pepsi. And did you see the size of you the – You got the stadium yeah. or whatever it was <laughs> there, yeah. And Matt had a glass of – I think Sprite or something like that, and it came in just a regular pint glass. So I had to ask Matt, "What's what? What would make you know? Do I look like I need a liter of Pepsi? Do I look <laughs> okay, like I I, see, I, I, see, I, I drink a liter of Pepsi? I don't drink Pepsi, but I'm you know." Uh, it, it was interesting. It was an interesting uh, social experiment, I guess you could say. <laughs> Maybe I look like Pepsi guy. Do You're I look like Pepsi guy? Because I am not. I really don't drink uh, Pepsi. Uh, if I'm if I'm drinking anything carbonated, it would usually be like a bubbly or something like that. A lot that. of ice in that thing, though. Hey, you're paying there was ice. a lot of ice. There was a lot of ice. There was a lot uh, of ice. Next EST watch party will be Sunday. 
uh, evening game again, 8, 8.30, I want to say. But this coming Sunday, as we'll be at Hudson's White Avenue location, that's the next EST watch party. But Tom Gazzola will be live pre and post uh, at Hudson's Bourbon Street Wednesday and then at White on the Friday as well. But the next EST watch party, uh, to which we'll be out again, I, I mean, I, I might be on Wednesday. There's no... <laughs> never say never with me, but uh, Dustin might be back as well and probably be out for the Sunday one. So if you want to make some plans and uh, head out Hudson's White on Sunday, that'll be the next watch party. But certainly you can join Tom. He'll have those GCs for you Wednesday, tomorrow, back at Hudson's Bourbon Street. And then Friday, of course, setting up Game 3 down in L.A. from Hudson's on White. Uh, let's get into this EM Utility locating uh, morning after show. Uh, brought to you, of course, as I just mentioned, EM Utility locating dot com you can call 780-222-9497 or visit them www.emutilitylocating.com gpr and concrete scanning damage prevention planning design education and training they will do it all for you visit them today emutilitylocating.com jason milne oilers 7-4 game one win over the la kings out shooting the kings 45 37 mcdavid five assists zach hyman with the hat trick what was your big moment that happened in last night's game, according to you. Well, I mean, obviously it had to, it had to be that Hyman hat trick goal. I mean that that sent the the building into a tizzy. Uh, it it resolidified their their stranglehold on the game, and I just thought the timing of it the the you know obviously the timing was necessary because the Kings were starting to eke back into that game. Mm-hmm. That kind of closed the door officially, I believe, um, and and just. For your leading goal scorer throughout your regular season campaign on the number one line to contribute like that and the number one line to contribute. I, I would say my my tip of the hat, as you would say, would yeah. go to that first line with a little bit of a 1A to Zach Hyman because they played exactly how Oilers fans want them to play, which is a refreshing uh, thing to see. It's encouraging on game one that your big dogs are going out there and doing what they yes, do best yes. and, and kind of nullifying the the dogs in the other yard. And and I'll see your Hyman uh, with with the dry sidle goal as well. I'm going to go with him on the power play to make it 5-2 to uh, crack open the third. The Kings, and, and, and you know, I, you can talk about the goals that they scored and, you know, maybe a little fluky here, greasy there, maybe the score flattering them a bit. But I... I you know, four two. You're going into the third period, which, as you mentioned, they're they're kind of turning on and spinning and getting into it. But dry settle on the power play. Hyman would have that power play goal as well, the six two marker. Um, the the special teams last night outstanding. A few other moments I would turn to as well. We did talk about starts with this team and and game ones and just that tightness on the stick. The lights are bright. Everybody's pumped up. How do you ride those emotions and those nerves? But I think Stuart Skinner early on on Kevin Fiala. Fiala had a look early, early on. Things were still buzzing. The hits were flying. Uh, but Skinner on Fiala early. Man, I don't know. I, I'm not saying that if that goes in, the whole night changes and the series changes and everything. But it is one of those moments where you could say, oh, and the shoulders maybe dip a bit or, or something happens where the momentum's lost. But, but it didn't. It and, didn't. And, and that's, that's what I'm saying. And those you know? are these, these are these differences. And I, I was speaking with somebody last night, too, and I believe it was a nasty, but... I think when you look at desire with these two clubs and even look across the Western Conference or the Stanley Cup playoff picture as a whole, I don't know how many teams are going to out-desire the Oilers. And and I think it comes down to moments like this. Um, but Skinner early on in Fiala, I think, will be a moment for me that stood out. And I think Arvidsson, too, had a good look on that break. Um, and then the play shifted right back down to the Oilers' zone. Oilers put in the back of the net. And I know a few other goals were scored after that, but I think that was pretty... I mean, that a hell of a chance again, and Arvidsson's left just kind of doing hands in the air, what can I do? And so I think Skinner had a good night, maybe a quiet good night given the shots, but I think important for him and important early on as well, that save on Fiala. Um, Superstat of the night, what stands out for you? I mean, take your pick. I don't think there's any wrong answer here last night. Honestly, I, you know, going to what we just talked about was Stu Skinner. I mean, 33 of 37 shots. In a game that was as fast, you know, it opened up like that, thirty-three saves in an, in an NHL playoff game is a, is a good, good game. It was a solid game for Skinner. He didn't really let in any 
questionable squeaky. Oh gosh, those, those weird had ones that. were weird ones. I they mean, had, they, can't they really... had those, the first two goals were complete fluke. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it, there's nothing. The one off say. nurse skate. I mean, the the stick broke. I mean, there's just stuff happening. And then the final fourth goal, there's whiffed on that too. Yeah. So I mean, as far as if you if you want to look at a super stat or something that sticks out, is that the Oilers had real goaltending last night. They did not have. You know how in, in years past, it seems like every game you're just waiting for that one weak, lame, oh, shucks, he should have had a goal to go in. That didn't happen last night. So I will say that, that Stu Skinner gets uh, gets that super stat or just, just you know, thank you. It's a great show. <laughs> thank you well, for Oilers show. fans. And it's not like he was – I don't think we were heading into the series with, with big question marks hanging over his head or anything, but you, you, you rewind to last year's playoffs and, and – you know Jack Campbell's time here in Edmonton and/or Bakersfield, and and I think Skinner know you know one of these moments last night where he announces himself, and it might take a few yeah to to get people's attention, namely out east or, or wherever. Uh, but I think a big night for him. You're right in in net there, and I mean a few good looks, and and again I just early on just kind of keeping the minute there with that that Fiala look too. I'll go back to I my super stat. I'm going to go with the the special teams Oilers connecting three or four with the man advantage, holding the Kings over two. Um, again, just hitting the high notes. Your your goal score gets the goals. He gets the hat trick. Your assist magician, just another five. And and as somebody <laughs> in the nasty chat quoted, you know, just another game. I mean, this is this is the attitude you want here. Um, but but special teams, um, as advertised, and and the power play. If you're clicking along at a seventy five percent, and and holding the Kings to an zero for two, um, that that's a great recipe for success there. So you got to love the special teams last night. Fourth star of the evening once again. I, it, it's just kind of a. Take your take your choose. Hyman, McDavid, Bouchard, your one, two, three. And of course, Bouchard, we can't forget as well, having a monster night in the points department as McDavid had the five assists, Bouch four assists, Hyman with the hat trick. Um, I don't mind Henrique. Fourth yeah. star, again, uh, when we were talking about Pisani-like performers this postseason and who would you pick to kind of emerge. And I always said, can't be in the top six. Um, but you know, the Henrik, and there were a few murmurs last night around the bar, hell of an acquisition. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, 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 of and, and, and they how, it's how they drew it up and everybody wanted him. I know at trade deadline, I, we couldn't, it was Henrik this, Henrik that everybody wanted him and the Oilers delivered and they, you got your man, but, um, the goal was nice. Great shot. He's been making use of his time up there and getting those minutes. So. I'm going to go with Adam Henry. First that is point. a hell of a thing for you to say to me. First playoff point I, since, I, since his time in Jersey, I do believe. So mm-hmm. um, good for him. Baby's come a long way. And uh, Adam Henry, Rico getting some uh, some playoff uh, points there with a goal and a helper last night. Do you want to add anything on him? I mean, I just... It's I was nice gonna that say, we, 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 you know, dumping on Kenny's trade deadline and all. And, and look, we'll be the first to admit it, but... Um, He's turning up right now. I was going to say that aside from the the one giveaway up the middle uh, that that was pretty glaringly obviously bad, Ryan McLeod, Ryan McLeod looked pretty stable last night. He was skating. He was using his speed. I would like to see, and 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 I think the Oilers need to see that third line and uh, fourth or that third and fourth line start. You know, I it mean, won't all be nights like that. They won't it. all be nights like that. Somebody just in the nasty chat said uh, Dean Belanger made a great point. My only takeaway that worries me from last night: the Oilers will have a hard time getting any calls with that le- lethal penalty, uh, power play. The stripes are going to let the Kings kill them. Well, that's what I'm saying. You, right? You yeah, know yeah, they that's took coming. Advantage. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> so third and fourth line need, needs to get rolling. Did yep. you see that they moved Holloway up mid game up to the third line? Like they need that Fire. speed up there with uh, with Corey Perry. So, I think the 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 nice thing to see was that there was changes made during the game uh, to to benefit what was going on in the game. I yep. think Knobloch had a good feel and handle on that. Uh, but I, I I was really impressed with McLeod's game. I thought he was skating. If if he's skating, he's lethal, and he's he's creating. He's creating a four check and. Uh, yeah, I, I thought McLeod was the guy that stood out to me as the fourth star. Yeah, I mean, and obviously, as as we've kind of talking about the big dogs taking most of the headlines this morning, but Evander Kane, a, a six-shot night as well, um, as he drew into the lineup amid concerns that he would be abs- perhaps absent for game one. Um, but, I, I, you know, again, a night, they're not all going to be like this, but it's a great hell of a start, and especially when you've kind of come out flat 
and uh, behind the eight ball the past couple years in this game one. So they'll 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 like this. They'll pocket it. They'll they'll breathe it in. Um, but I think most of this team, and just judging by the sounds of the locker room last night, um, you, you move on, and it's game two, and it's one game at a time. I think Glenn Ma down in Calgary had the little uh, Twitter graphic of all these 6 o'clock lockers with he the cups, did. and one down, uh, however many to go, so we appreciate him there. Let's, um, let's hit a sports update. We'll just come back and keep discussing this game. we got goal songs as well to get to, courtesy Sportball, uh, but other things happening in the world of sports last night, and uh, Jay Milne can uh, take us through here. It's a sports update brought to you by uh, Green Plan. Zach Hyman scored his first ever postseason hat trick as the Oilers went on to defeat the Kings 7-4 in Game 1 of the Western Conference quarterfinals. Edmonton was firing on all cylinders as McDavid assisted on five goals while Dreisaitl had a goal and an assist. Stuart Skinner was also solid in net as he stopped 33 shots. Game 2 goes Wednesday as the Oilers look to keep things rolling. The Golden Knights manage to hold on as they take the dub against the Stars 4-3. And Game 2 of the Eastern, quarter, Eastern Conference quarterfinals saw the Leafs tie up the series with a 4-3 win over the Bruins. And the Islanders held a 3-1 lead over the Hurricanes heading into the third period and then completely fell apart, allowing three goals in the span of two minutes and eventually fell 5-3. In the NBA, Canadian Jamal Murray hit an insane game-winning buzzer beater to lift the Nuggets to a 101-99 victory over the Lakers. The Knicks take a 2 to nothing series lead over the 76ers as they win 104-101. And the Cavaliers also take a commanding 2 nothing lead over the Magic with a 96-86 victory. In the major leagues of baseball, the Blue Jays got their seventh win in their last nine as they beat the Royals 5-3. This sports update was brought to you by Green Plan, providing you with an award-winning environmental planning and consulting services. Whether it's municipal, industrial, or residential, plan it right with Green Plan. Visit greenplan.com or give them a call at It is the Nielsen Show, Edmonton Sports Talk, 640 Tuesday morning. Lieutenant Eric, J. Milne, glue guy, and Zach come behind the monitors. Dustin Nielsen rounding out his family trip down to San Diego. He'll be back on the air Thursday morning, recapping game two, Oilers-Kings. That's set to go Wednesday night. You can have your say. Paris Jewelers inbox, 780-218-9999. to a on the line for a text of the day. Nasty Chad Buzzing along, I'm loving it. People are. It's it's a nice conversation this morning. A few things that uh, I, I think is always a few concerns. Look, it's never a perfect outing, game, whatever. 
Uh, you're always striving for perfection. So I'm sure there's some things we can work on from last night. But listen, it's uh, when you got Hyman throwing the hat trick, McDavid with the five assists, power play kicking, special teams, Skinner. They don't air us out of T-shirt cannons. What more could you ask for? But what, uh, a, what a time to be alive. I mean, just what a you, time you'll remember to where be you alive. were, right? <laughs> like this type of stuff. So, um, But other things happening last night, too, around the Stanley Cup playoffs, three other games. And as uh, Jay mentioned in his sports update, uh, the Leafs evening their series of the Bruins 3 2 your final there. The Islanders with a paltry 12 shots on net. But we're up at, at points in this game, but they ultimately fall to the Hurricanes 5 3. Uh, the one we had our eyes, we had we had our eyes peeled to this as well in terms of Western Conference paths to the Cup final. Uh, but your Vegas Golden Knights, four three victors on the road over the Dallas Stars. Stars out shooting the Knights thirty to fifteen, and uh, we we talk about it here with the Oilers, but it's just your. Usual suspects again for Vegas. Did anybody score in that game that would be of any relevance? Uh, there's a, let me just see here. A Braden McNabb, Davidson, Saskatchewan zone. Got to love that. I knew it. Uh, I knew it was him. And then I'm looking here. Uh, March is so. Oh, Mark Stone and Thomas Hurtle. Ah! Well, you know, look, we can't be. Uh, we need to act like we've been here before with this. I, I can't, can't have sour we grapes. We can't be going through the playoffs and every time these guys get on the score sheet, say, oh, 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 this is what it is, and it's happened, and they they. They, they operated perfectly with well in the framework of the rules. It's all fine. I would have, again, we were talking last night. Evander Kane, I would have gotten on the, I'd say, hey, Vegas, give me the number to Nick Riviera. Let's 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 phone the one triple nine. Get that doc in here, and we can do what we have to do. I, I I'm not I'm not sour grapesing the Vegas Golden Knights. I, I I refuse to be entertained or listen to any of it. You know, in the in the words of the great Herm Edwards. Uh, head coach of the New York Jets at the time from yes. the podium, he says, we play to win the game. We play to win the game. They play to win the game, baby. If it's in the rules and you're doing it, who cares? I, I, I mean, uh, you may not like it. Then. Yeah, you may not like it, then it, join it's, them. It's, it's what it, it is. is, what I, it hate, is. I hate that phrase and I hate that saying, but right now it is. And uh, they have Stone and Hurdle back and they both scored last night in a 4-3. It's just delicious. That whole, I mean, it's just, of it's course, of course like, they score. It's like the greatest <laughs> troll job in NHL history. Wait, you, just, you thought they wouldn't? Yeah, like, <laughs> hello. Come on, McFly. I mean, anyone in their right mind would do that, right? I mean, the owners think in it, like, you can argue as much as you want that it's bad and against the rules. Oh, it really isn't. It, yeah. it really isn't. You can hate it as much as you want, but sure. it, it's going to continue happening until the owners say, okay, let's go. But it is poetic to see Hurdle and Stone score. Not I a, love it. Not a, you know. But it's it's just written up, you know. It's it's in the script. Let's say it, it boils. It certainly <laughs> boils the piss of a lot of people out there, though. And that that almost too is a real entertaining for uh, for for folks out there. But yeah, no, uh, Vegas getting that game one win on the road in Dallas. Um, that's a big one. And then taking a look as uh, tonight's schedule trucks on. Gotta love the opening round. It's just it's March Madness. It's it's. Like All the April, time. NBA, NHL, April everything's yeah, going Yeah, I guess on. you can argue. But uh, Rangers tonight, they're at home to the Capitals, leading that series 1-0. Puck drop at 5. 5.30, it's the Panthers at home to the Lightning. Florida ahead, 1-zip. Winnipeg hosting Colorado tonight. There'll be a 7.30 mountain puck drop around there. Uh, Jets obviously taking game one the other evening. And then Vancouver and the Preds at 8 with the Canucks leading that series one game to none. That's your four games on tonight's menu. But... Uh, your say on last night's uh, win over the Kings? Look, it's it's taking care of business. It's all those good things. I think a lot of that was echoed from the dressing room last night. Uh, Zach, do we have a little bit of words, a little bit of a uh, phrasing from the from the room last night? We can get to post game. Yeah, for sure. Um, we got we got a couple. Dealer's choice, Betty. You just uh, you hit us with whatever here. Sweet. Very nice, but I mean, lots of work to do. Obviously, so still got to play uh, as hungry as we we do when we lose. So. How does that potentially help you guys? You know, you obviously want to get this done faster than you don't want to get ahead of yourselves, but getting it done faster than could, could really help you guys go on a long run. Ah, one game at a time. I think it just it helps you in the sense that you know you only got to win three instead of four, right? You're not uh, behind the gun, um, so it's good. You got to defend home ice. You got another game on home ice, so it's important to take care of business here. What's the most satisfying part of your game as a team? I think. Uh, I think the start of the third, like I think, uh, you know, they have their push in the second. I think grabbing hold of it in the third and and uh, scoring a big power up a goal, goal, I think that's just a huge goal to kind of, you know, 
settle the group down and um, kind of be the dagger, I think. If the, if the battle becomes playing the most minutes of your style as opposed to the other team getting to play it their way, you guys had most of that game. The game was played on your terms most of the night. Is that a, in itself an uh, accomplishment, I guess, something you're trying to do? I think, yeah, I think you want to exert um, your style. Like, I think you want to be able to have the game in the flow that you want it in, right? I think, I think if it's the other way, you're, you're frustrated and uh, you're not happy, obviously. If they're you know, imposing their will on, on you, it's not a great feeling. I thought um, special teams was great. Like, I thought the PK was solid. I thought Stu was solid. I've never seen so many you know, bad bounces for, for a goalie um, in that game. So I think just a, a solid game. You looked like you were a little banged up going off there. I know it's playoffs, you might not say much, but you were back on the ice after. Was yeah. It all good? Oh, yeah, it was completely fine. I just hit, uh, I don't care because it's nothing. It was just a, you know, hit your funny bone with a slash, and then your arm goes numb for a minute, and then you sit on the bench, like, okay, it's back. Exactly. So it's kind of like when you get your hit in the foot with a puck, it goes numb. Same type of deal. No, nothing. Is that the most amount of hats you've seen for a hat trick? <laughs> <laughs> 12 bags? <laughs> 14. 14. 1,131 hats. Oh, man. Uh, good for the oil store. <laughs> 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 That's crazy. I've never seen so many hats, no. But uh, pretty pretty special to do it here in, in front of the fans. Do you ever go see those hats and try to see what, what kind of hats you maybe would like? Uh, no. They usually bring them down, but I think, you know, playoffs is no need. We're just going to move, we'll move on and you know, take the win. Safe to say it's the biggest hat trick of your career? Yeah, I mean, in the playoffs, every goal you score just, I mean, gets you closer to the ultimate goal. So like You had a career year, and the playoffs, everybody says a new season. How important was it for you just to get a good, off to a good start in the playoffs and just kind of carry your momentum over? You know, I mean, you want to feel good going into the playoffs. Obviously, you want to feel good, but I think it's just at this time of year everybody is so focused on winning it doesn't matter who scores obviously um, that's been a big part of my game this year so um, it's important that you know I'm able to produce but I think regardless of who scores we're all pulling on the same rope and um, it was just a, a huge effort from from the entire group tonight so um, yeah it was, it was a good one there you have it, last night's hero. One of many heroes uh, from last night's game for the Oilers, Zach Hyman, recording that hat trick. And, uh, you know, the uh, the plaudits and the messages continue to roll in. Uh, where was this here? Uh, probably his best. Zach Hyman played one of the most complete and best games I've ever seen last night. That comes in from Big Maple. And I think somebody, I'm seeing the word statement as well, texted in a few times at the Paris Jewelers inbox, 780-218-9999, to which I ask whom, a statement to whom, is this uh, Zach Hyman, uh, you know, uh, given the uh, double bird to Andrew Berkshire, is that is that is this, is this game one? He's like, oh, I'm going to go out and address the guy that uh, went on uh, went on TikTok and went after me. No, I think it's a little more than that. But yes, what statement for the king? Statement for the league? Statement for maybe the Oilers themselves? Right? Seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine is the number to text. But uh, yeah, I didn't really run it again to an LTIR argument today. I just want I just want to get it out there that you know anytime this Stone and Hurdle are good players and they're probably going to factor in moving forward as well. So every time they do, we can't be getting into this whole hubbub again all over. We know what the we know what we know what it is. We know what the landscape is. We know what's happened. We know what's transpired. We gotta move forward and just understand it and live with it. And 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 have belief that the world right? It works in mysterious ways. Oh yes. You you wanna you want to take advantage of the system? That's fine. Maybe 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 at a certain point the system will then take advantage of them. Who knows? But let 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 that all play out. It usually plays out the right way. You know what? <clears throat> who cares? <laughs> like, who cares? <laughs> right? Well, it's, it is what it is. Yeah. It is what it is. And they're not doing anything wrong. They didn't break any rules. They are sure they might be uh, stretching or, or, you know, they're playing the game. They're playing who the game, cares? Baby. You game know, on, on and off the ice. Right? And I will say, Amish Man 19. It is a happy hello first playoff win, baby. Let's go. Hello. <laughs> 1,131 hats yesterday, uh, Joel, with the uh, correct number down there. Um, so we'll keep... I mean, hey, if you want, if you in the nasty chat want to have that LT, have at it, you can talk about whatever you want. I ain't policing it. I ain't policing it. Keep it clean. 
Uh, keep it a little light. <laughs> but it's like, look, you can you can talk as much LTIR as you want. Hit the likes though. Hit the likes, and then we'll uh, then then it's all fine. But uh, hit the like, hit the sub, and uh, yeah, I, I just I don't need to get into it. I'm just saying it's it's. Here I am saying we don't need to get into it, and I keep getting into it, and I can't stop because it's 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 addicting. Um, I let, quickly to the NBA as well, uh, playoff picture in that uh, league. Hashtag Association City and the uh, Denver Nuggets. <laughs> you know, in the uh, in the flurry of Oilers tweets last night on Twitter, it is it, it warms my loins when I see one account with the egg as the profile picture. A, a name just Greg about a bunch of numbers after and saying, hey, tell your boy that LeBron is dusted and, and so on and so forth. That is a hell of well, a thing for you to say to me. As the Nuggets are now up two games to none on the Lakers, 101-99. Another Canadian factoring in in Jamal Murray a night after Shy Gilgis Alexander provides the heroics for the Thunder. Uh, so good Canadian content. It's kind of suited, you know, that I'm sitting in the big man's chair here getting a <laughs> diss feel? on LeBron. How does it feel? You wanna... Hey, LeBron. <laughs> hey, Goat. You're a big MJ guy, aren't you, too? Eh? Huge. He's the GOAT. He's <laughs> do you number take, one. Do you want to have a minute? not even number two. I mean, what are your... Uh... What are we talking about here? <laughs> Jeez, LeBron. Too. Anyways. Hey, LeBron. <clears throat> Hang on. Can we zoom in, Zach? No. <laughs> I'm talking to you, LeBron. You know, game's tied late in the game. 99-99. And you're the GOAT, supposed, says the man who normally sits here. 99-99 in game two, and the ball is in your hands. Your defender trips and falls, and you're sitting wide open, twiddling your little rich thumbs <laughs> at the three-point line, looking to put a dagger into the Nuggets' heart and steal back game two. Wide open. Dunk. Misses it. Guess what? That's not a player that a GOAT... That's not a play that the GOAT makes. Okay, LeBron, you're not the GOAT. Jamal Murray was the GOAT last night because he came down and stuffed it in your face. Oh, Canada. It's our league, right? We created basketball, didn't we? We are. We, we, we are invented in it, and now right we're now. taking it back over, and I love it. You know what? It was just, it was such a great. <laughs> Too bad we got hockey to do. <laughs> watching that live, and, I, and of course I say this in jest. LeBron is a hell of a player. Don't get me wrong, but. The to to be in that situation to have the ball in your hands that late in the game. I think there was nine seconds left, maybe maybe ten, eleven seconds left. He literally had <laughs> two or three seconds to shoot that shot to make the game winning three point shot, and he misses it. The real talent, the real team comes down the floor, and Jamal Murray shakes and bakes for a baseline J. Boom! Count it. Nuggets up two nothing. I think that might seal the fate for the Lakers and Matty Wanick. They're over. Yeah, it's Maddie, over. Matty had his phone. <laughs> yeah, I forgot about Matty too. He had his phone going on at the bar last night. <laughs> you know, it, it is. <laughs> They've had their success. You know, we we can laugh at him, right? Lakers done and dusted, down two nothing to the Nuggets. Knicks also up two games to none on the Sixers with a one hundred four one hundred one victory, and another two nothing series lead goes the Cavaliers' way as Cleveland defeat the Orlando Magic ninety six eighty six. Looking at the playoff picture today, three more in the NBA, and that's later tonight. Suns visiting the T Wolves at five thirty. Mini up one game to none. Bucks and Pacers from Milwaukee. Bucks leading one game to none. And the Clippers look to go 2 nothing up on the Mavericks when they host Dallas later tonight at 8 as well. So your NBA playoff picture as well. Jay's last... I mean, I don't really... Uh, here I am talking here. 7 of 9. Uh, 7 of 9. 5-3 of, of the heater. Royals taking that uh, series opener. It's a four-game set with Kansas City. Game 2 of 4 going later today at 540. But... Yeah, we'll we'll keep an eye on the Jays and see how they roll here. They after Kansas City, they do return home for a Friday uh, weekend set with the LA Dodgers. So if they can kind of uh, run wild through KC, they set up a pretty uh, tantalizing weekend for Toronto at home to uh, to the Dodgers. So we'll keep an eye on that as well. Seven eight zero two and eight ninety nine ninety nine is the number to text. Uh, more texts on the Vegas thing. Here's one from Brett's. Good morning. These boys sure did get oily last night. Man, oh man. Hey, Kings, careful. Don't slip. That comes in from Brett. I think he was taking a few uh, a few words and notes from a Atif song, the man in the chair who we played, who he sent this morning to my personal phone. I, I, <laughs> I rue the day I gave him my phone number, but uh, here we are, and uh, that's just what happens. Um, Zach, do you have a little bit of news you'd like to announce here? You're, you're getting in. You're uh, texting here. Get 
Hit it. Uh, hit us with it. The news? Yeah. The big news. That news? Y- you texted me some news you here. You texted ah. us some news, Zach. Oh, I did. News. Come on. I did. I'm your huckleberry. Oh, my gosh. Flyers sign goaltender uh, Fedotov to a two-year, $6.5 million contract extension after he, uh, of course, comes over from the KHL, that big man himself, tallest goalie in the National Hockey League. So Ivan Fedotov gets the bag for the Flyers. You just, you just can't resist a little Flyers talk, hey? Oilers take game one. It's the day after, and here you are. You got you got to go Flyers way, do you? It's you big can. news. That's what it's popped up. It's a big man. He's a big man, big guy, and a uh, big contract. As always with these playoff games, it, it, it's the game on the ice, but a lot of things happening off the ice, whether the uh, T-shirt cannon shooting Donaires, uh, whether it's the Flyers signing a large uh, Russian goaltender to an extension, or... Clean Costin in attendance. You see that too? What in a beauty. stands wearing his I think the jersey, he was either wearing it or it was uh, draped over his shoulders, uh, almost like a sarong. But uh, Kev texting in a nice pick of former Oiler Clean Costin. Uh, his old number 21 jersey, yeah, draped over his shoulder. Uh, he looked like he was having a good time smiling and laughing. So Nice to see that. Nice to see that. You know, it was funny, uh, came in earlier on the uh, – Paris Jewelers inbox two one eight nine 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 nine, and it might be. I mean, it, we need we need some uh, some deeper uh, uh, messages here on in the inbox because right now this is this is probably the leader in the clubhouse just because it was okay. a pretty impressive stat that Rip City Step uh, sent in. Good to see you last night, Rip. Uh, most points in the first fifty career Stanley Cup playoff games: Gretzky one hundred four, Lemieux one hundred one, Drysaddle and McDavid three. Four, dry saddle with seventy seven, McDavid with seventy six. Not bad. Nuclear option. That's they are. They are them. Did, um, did you see the replay on that dry saddle goal from like scraping <laughs> the red light? Like the 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 accuracy. I think they'll be on selling that. it on Oilers Plus later today. You can kind of get right. Your, you know, you get oh, you get a quick oh, like, you get a good. real yeah, yeah. jolt. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. got to be uh, eighteen and over. Uh, yeah. But. <laughs> Yeah, it, it is a thing of beauty, and to be able to do that at such a high clip and a high consistency, there's no reason, you know, no doubt that he's third on the scoring list after 100 career or 50 career playoff games. Well, and McDavid as well. I mean, executing a bit of a, I don't know if you want to call it a full uh, Elvis Stoico spinorama, but he, he was getting out there last night. I mean, any and all injury concern or... Uh, you know, again, everybody's hurt at this time of year. Yeah, yeah, we get that. But, you know, there was a bit of a concern with him sitting himself, whether you call it resting or whatever. Um, but he was he was flying around. I mean, this is a team right now, and, and pun intended, but looking like a pretty well-oiled machine in terms of health and everything. And even Evander Kane. I mean, there's a few praises for him this morning. Um, six shots on net. I mean, it, it's it, it visible out there. Not Not needed last night. Um, but I think too, again, there wasn't any, any sort of identifying somebody and saying there's, there is a problem. What's wrong there? Something's happening there. So I, I don't know, just overall pretty good all around the board. And, uh, you know, aside from a few mistakes, I feel bad for nurse too. just the puck going off is, of course, it's gotta be him, but, uh, <laughs> you know, outside of that, I mean, Could it was be Bouchard. pretty polished. <laughs> I Could mean, he had Vinny. four assists. It would kind I of know. even things out there a bit, but, uh, but you know what? It's a great point because there was nobody that stood out and said, oh, that guy had a stinker though. There was no that, no, you know, no. we're nitpicking here at what was overall a great, Game one, series one, victory. It's the first time they've taken a home playoff game since 1990 in game one. That is an amazing stat. The first time in 34 years. That's incredible. Game one, home game. I don't, I don't. I'm not buying it. I refuse. You ain't buying what glue guys sell. Hey, people are loving the glue cam. Is that was uh, yeah we hey? got deep there. Nice work on that Zach to him as well. Where'd I know you didn't Zach's get your full come? what you wanted the full uh, you know fish eye lens on you. But we got a, a bit of a zoom in. I like that your statements moving forward. You can have like a, a glue statement or a well Joel like or asked earlier that I should have my own segment. Maybe it's uh, up close and personal with glue guy. I don't mind that at all. I don't think people want to see that. Maybe a one on one. You talk to the 
Or maybe we just turn and talk to each other, Eric, and we talk about our lives. I, I, I can do that too. Feelings. Might get a little, uh, might get a little off track though. I don't want to. Uh, might turn get a little any, emotional. Turn in anybody here. off here? Uh, Tube Sock says McDavid's spinorama aggravated my sports hernia. Uh, do Fish B says McDavid was very economical on the ice. Noticed him observing, etc. Good to see. Economical is a good uh, describer there as well. I mean, it, it is game one, and I think again. Singing the refrain from the locker room, they know it's game one, and it's one game at a time and a steady pace. Um, as I was sucking down my fourth or fifth logger last night and not really observing those rules too much. But first game, I can... You set the base now, right? Game one, you, and then you, you got to go set the ground level, yeah. You yeah. Got, you, the foundation needs to be strong in order to be built upon. I'm okay. I'm doing fine. It's, it's got a good okay. chicken wing in your base. I had the I had the strips. Two plates. I had the tenders. Two plates. I saw that you went back for a second round. You went down on that Caesar salad and a good plan too. You eat the Caesar. It was salad. a spring salad. Was it spring? It I was. Thought I, I thought I noticed the uh, the dressing in there. It looked at Caesar. no. Looked there was uh, broccoli. Sauce. There was uh, some sort of a uh, sunflower seed and some cucumbers. I saw a Wanak had it when I walked in, and I said, "Damn, that looks like a good salad." And sure enough, it really was. Food's great. Hot wings, uh, chicken Caesar wings, going down a dream last night. But you can join Tom Gazzola. He'll be to Hudson's Bourbon Street Wednesday for Game 2. Game 3, Friday, Hudson's White. And then another EST watch party. Game 4, Sunday night, Hudson's White Avenue. Join the EST crew there. we got to get out of here. 702. Darren Dreger coming up in a matter of minutes. Uh, we'll hit a sports update here from the glue guy and be back. Hour number two, chugging along here the Nielsen Show, EdmontonSportsTalk.com. And this is Farm Talk with Glue Guy. No, just <laughs> that was a good one, Joel. Here's your sports update. Zach Hyman scored his first ever postseason hat trick as the Oilers went on to defeat the Kings 7 4 in game one of the Western Conference quarterfinals. Edmonton was firing on all cylinders as McDavid assisted on five goals while Drysaddle had a goal and an assist. Stuart Skinner was strong and solid in net as he stopped 33 shots. Game two goes Wednesday as the Oilers look to keep things rolling. The Golden Knights manage to hold on as they take the dub against the Stars 4-3. Game two of the Eastern Conference quarterfinals saw the Leafs tie the series up with a 4-3 win over the Bruins. The Islanders, the Islanders, the Islanders! They held a 3-1 lead over the Hurricanes heading into the third period and then completely fell apart, allowing three goals in the span of two minutes and eventually fell 5-3. Just in this morning from Zach to come. The Flyers sign goalie Fedotov to a two-year $6.5 million extension. In the NBA, Canadian Jamal Murray hit an insane game-winning buzzer beater to lift the Nuggets to a 101-99 victory over the Lakers. The Knicks take a 2-0 series lead over the 76ers as they win 104-101. And the Cavaliers also take a commanding 2-0 lead over the Magic with a 96-86 victory. In the major leagues, the Blue Jays get their seventh win in their last nine as they beat the Royals 5-3. to three. This sports update is brought to you by the Sports Bar and Lounge at Century Casino on Fort Road. Your home for all of the Oilers playoff action. Don't miss a minute of the cup run. Catch all the action at the Century Casino Sports Bar and Lounge. Closer to the hollow, the devil may care. If I showed you around my heart, would you mind if I shared to show you what's wrong with me? I will not change it. I will wait patiently while you get painted out. Let me in to your untainted tribe to be. The one who gets to live a lie Who oh, let me lie with you I'll be a perfect stranger I wanna be that stupid boy That you don't talk about You better believe There's a sharp knife beside my bed You better believe There's a sharp knife There you have it. 
Edmonton Sports Talk house band Whale and the Wolf. Edmonton Zone. Got to get them on a uh, Sportsnet bumper or something leading into a game. Or can you, like, their music would hit. Oh, with, with, man. It's so Stanley good. Stanley Cup playoffs. So I get them on the background. I don't know. What I, know I know you talked about it a little bit last week with Gager, and there might be more. St- so you don't want to talk too much because Matt Iwanek, I don't want to. I don't want to get a fine. Um, it is uh, seven oh six. Uh, it is the Nielsen Show. Lieutenant Eric in Dustin Nielsen still on his family vacation down in San Diego. We got glue guy Jason Milne with us this morning. Uh, Joaquin Gage will be with me tomorrow for the final ride, and uh, Zach to come behind the monitors as well. Have your say. Paris Jewelers inbox seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. It is humming. Uh, reaction from last night's games, of course. Uh, lots of other action going around the Stanley Cup playoffs. So. Chime in, have a say, get a text in. You could be walking out uh, today with $20 to a w for text the today. As of course, you can hear us on iHeartRadio, uh, the TuneIn Radio app, and watching on YouTube. Nasty Chat is humming along as well. Got to get those likes up, uh, but uh, we'll we'll get uh, closer we go. I'm sure the likes will be springing up now with our next Smash guest. It. And that is uh, TSN's Darren Dreger, brought to you as always by Pro-Am Sports. Uh, your locally owned sports memorabilia and apparel specialists. You can find them just north of the Yellowhead on St. Albert Trail, 128th Ave, or visit them online, proamsports.ca. Like you, they are sports nerds and AM nasties too. And welcome in Darren Dreger this morning. Darren, man, I know this is a busy time for you, so we really, really appreciate your time this morning. We won't keep you too long, but uh, more than enough to discuss regarding last night. I mean, I don't know if you could have got more of a perfect start yeah. from an Oilers fan point of view. Your goal scorer gets the hat trick. Your assist magician collects another five. Stuart Skinner playing pretty well in net. Obviously, yeah. a few of those Kings goals, a little greasy and, you know, a, a few bounces and, and things there. But we're struggling to find something that you can kind of, I mean, in the strive to perfection, Darren, there's always something. But almost, if not a perfect night, game one, especially for the Oilers last night against the Kings. Yeah, I think it's pretty close. And and look, if you want to start with something, and it's all positive, I think, from an Edmonton Oilers standpoint, uh, they executed the start of this hockey game to near perfection. You know, the concern going up against the Los Angeles Kings is how defensively structured the Kings can be. And, you know, I use the term real estate. There's not, shouldn't be a whole lot of it available to you and you've got to earn it you've got to work for it five on five you've got to be terrific because the kings traditionally don't give you a whole lot well how do you break that well you score uh early and get to the la kings with your offense and that's what edmonton did in the first i mean hyman opens the scoring henrik makes it two nothing and now what happens well la's got to chase the game so they've got to open it up a little bit so that is uh, re- pretty much blueprint, I would think, for Knobloch and uh, the Edmonton Oilers was the start. And then the big boys just simply took over in that game. The power play goes three for four. I'm in scoring like he did almost at will in the regular season. Good to see that that trend has been established in game one against L.A. Uh, and then you had Connor McDavid doing McDavid type things. So not a lot of area to be criticized or to be kind of concerned with, I think, going into game two from Edmonton's standpoint. Yeah, and I don't think, I mean, just judging by the tone from the room last night as well, and a few players yeah. speaking, Hyman, et cetera, um, yeah. you know, you can tell this group has aged a bit. It's another year of experience, but taking it very one game at a time and not getting ahead of themselves, um, they can speak themselves for that. For me, Darren, though, I am I was going to this thing, and I'm giving the Kings, I'm trying to give them a lot of credit. I'm trying to play contrarian here, and I know they they stack up good against the Oilers, and that 1-3-1 one, one shutting them down. But following last night, like, I've gone from, like, an Oilers in six or something to a sweep. Am I too far off? And, and again, kind of... You know, when it got like that last night, I know 7-4, maybe a little flattering to the Kings as it could have got a little <laughs> worse. Is this thing kind of, did they, did the Kings really need that game one? Or the way that the Oilers played last night, you mentioned with the big dogs. Yeah. I mean, is this just now a matter of time? My opinion last night following the end of the game kind of changed radically. I don't know if that's the mood in the it. Oilers room, but... No, it wouldn't be. Um, and it's a lofty expectation to think that, you know, the LA Kings, given their level of experience and layers of experience, aren't going to find a way to claw back in this series. Now, when you lose the first game, you know, automatically you're thinking, all right, well, we've got to earn the split. Otherwise, yeah, the potential for a sweep is is there. But I'm going to repeat myself. I, I just, I think that they're is too much in the lineup of the Los Angeles Kings not to find a way to at least squeeze one out. Are they going to be able to do it in the next game? I don't know. That was a pretty dominating performance from beginning to end for the Edmonton Oilers. But I can assure you one thing. Edmonton is not thinking sweep. It's just, it sounds so cliche, but it really is 
game by game. And you see, you know, I don't know what the Oilers have going on in their room, um, but you see most teams have you know, some sort of gimmick inside that room, right? We saw Dakota Joshua, who was given the player of the game puck for the Vancouver Canucks the other day, put it in the Stanley Cup because they've got 16 holes, you know, on this plaque in the form of the Stanley Cup. And you need, of course, 16 wins. And I know it sounds a little cliche, but really it embodies what teams are thinking about. And it's just one win at a time when you get too far ahead of yourself you run into trouble and that won't be the case for the Oilers yeah I think Zach Hyman to to go off your point there he got kind of the painter yeah. award with the little beret and then Stuart <laughs> Skinner is holding the plunger there for that as well but Skinner as well yeah. I thought made some timely saves early on to kind yeah. of steady things and steady the ship I did want to get your thoughts Darren though uh, mm -hmm. as well and Evander Kane popped up prior to game one of course he addressed the media and kind of you know splurged out the sports hernia thing there and, and set yeah. that on the table for us but we've had some glow reviews from his game last night six shots of course the offense maybe wasn't needed from him as the big boys were eating but you know can you can you comment a little maybe what you saw from him maybe go yeah. back to those words um you know does like we go into a playoff saying that this guy they all need to perform everybody needs to perform to have success but i think yeah. with an evander kane you know at this point of his career and the kind of the season he's had a, a 20 goals but a quiet 20 goals a night like that, like you're not going to be need needing to lean on him as much as maybe no. prior seasons or as you would have thought, right? Well, look, I mean, like Corey Perry, Vander Kane has the capability of being an X factor. Yeah. You know, you know what you're going to get from McDavid and Leon Dreisaitl and all the, the key offensive weapons, Zach Hyman, of course, that the Oilers have. But that's not to say that guys like Kane and Perry aren't going to find a way offensively to contribute. They will in the playoffs there's no question about that so what else do they bring to the equation and in Kane's perspective he brings a lot um, it was curious that he dropped the sports hernia information normally you know this time of year you're not getting anything out of the right group. they yeah. just won't divulge and in his case bah! you know I've been dealing with sports hernia for a lengthy period of time and then it was almost like he wanted us to know and understand that you know kind of setting the table for maybe a lackluster start or dips and sags in his playoff performance well he started strong right you know he's he's capable of of being uh, antagonizing, getting under your skin, hard on the forecheck, so the physicality comes with his game. He can flat out fly, whether or not you know the sports hernia is going to impede that. Let's see how it plays out. Didn't look like it did last night, but so many intangibles to Evander Kane's game. As long as he can keep his focus narrow and just focus on doing something out there. It yeah. doesn't have to be bone crushing. Right. It doesn't have to be drawing penalties. It doesn't have to be scoring goals. Just one of those things. Every time you step on the ice, he's going to help the team. He makes the Oilers better. He just does. Dregs, I'm going to I'm going to switch things up a bit because yeah. everything here has been Oilers, 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 Kings, Kings, yeah. Kings. <laughs> and and there's another series that's kind of taking over the hockey world, and that is the Jets and Avs. And that that game one was incredible. It was yeah. must-watch TV. And, and I'm curious uh, on your opinion. I mean, you, you have a goalie in Hellebuck that, that yeah. allowed six goals on 46 shots. And, and, and yeah. he played amazing. Okay, <laughs> And then across, across the rink, you have Gorgiev, who allowed seven on 23. I saw, I saw a piece that you did there that, that might explain a little bit more in your answer. But yeah. how concerning is that avalanche goaltending uh, in, in terms of how far the avalanche can go and, and what they're up against in the Winnipeg Jets? Yeah, Jay, it has to be deeply concerning. Uh, you know, Jared Bednar, I'm in Winnipeg for this series, and, you know, Bednar touched on it yesterday as part of the off-day media availability, and the head coach is trying to be as positive as he can be, but also very direct. And, you know, when talking about Georgiev, he just said, look, he knows that he needs to be better in game two and the expectation tonight is that he is going to be better but the problem is you're going against a guy in Hellebuck who very likely is going to win the Vesna trophy I, I just I don't see much doubt in that to be honest and his methodology through a crazy like hair on fire start to this series 13 goals was yeah you know it got a little dicey there in the third period but I just felt like all I needed to do was make one more save than the other guy well <laughs> Connor Hellebuck is more than capable of, of doing that. And if not for Hellebuck to start that hockey game, um, I'm thinking back. I think Colorado had 
nine, 10 shots in the first three and a half minutes of the first period. Well, if, if they find a way to get a couple of quick ones, now Winnipeg is chasing and maybe the outcome of this game is quite a bit different. So structurally, Winnipeg is going to tighten up for game two, but they also have the, the talent to pressure the, the Colorado Avalanche. And if they can get to Georgiev the way that they did in game one, I don't expect that they're going to put up six, seven goals against the Avs in game two tonight. But the goaltending in Colorado is, it, it's topic number one for me. We're going to be talking about leading up to game two tonight because we don't have a choice. They've got everything going for them outside of the crease. But as we've seen historically in, in every series and every Stanley Cup champion, goaltending is right at the top of the list of needs. TSN Hockey Insider Darren Dreger joining us this morning. Nielsen Show, EdmontonSportsTalk.com. Uh, brought to you by Pro-Am Sports. Darren, I just wanted to get your thoughts as well. And Austin Matthews getting his 70th of the campaign last night, uh, as was announced yeah. on the broadcast. <laughs> much, to the, uh, much to the chagrin yeah. of a few fans out here. But Toronto evening that yeah. series at 1. Uh, just want to get your thoughts on that ahead of as well. And if you can just kind of double up here. I mean, the game that Oilers fans out here, and I think a lot out west were focused on, that Dallas Golden Knights game mm. uh, down in the Big D. And, and a couple of big players announcing themselves yeah. back from the LTIR, which really scratched people the wrong way. So your thoughts both on the yeah. Leafs-Boston series and then game one between the Stars and Golden Knights as well. Well, if we start with Toronto and Boston, I mean, that was must win. And it sounds crazy, but it really was. I mean, Toronto goes down 2 nothing in that series in Boston. And that just takes a completely different tone and personality as the series shifts back to Toronto. And not unlike Connor McDavid and how he, you know, dominated that hockey game last night and Zach Hyman with the hat trick. You know, that's what Austin Matthews did for the Leafs. But it went way beyond the, the game-winning goal and the two assists. It was just his overall complete game this guy played almost 23 and a half minutes and tied ryan reeves in hits with six in that game leading the toronto maple leafs and i don't think that matthews gets enough credit for how complete a player he is you know on my awards ballot of course i had mcdavid and mckinnon and austin matthews on my heart ballot um, but I also had Austin Matthews, you know, on the Selkie and on the Lady Bing as well, just in recognition for how he plays the game, how hard he chases the puck, how he protects the puck, all of the intangibles that maybe don't get the same sort of acknowledgement uh, because they're not on the score sheet. So let's see if, you know, his dominance in, in game two will carry on as that series progresses. Over in Vegas and, and Dallas, how would you feel if you're the Dallas Stars? I mean, wire to wire, you've got a terrific run in the Western Conference in the regular season. You know, you draw the Vegas Golden Knights. There was no guarantee pushing towards the end of the regular season. There's no guarantee Vegas was even going to qualify. And, oh, on top of that, now in comes Mark Stone, and here comes Alex Petrangelo off the appendectomy. Yep, they're both good to go for game one. And Stone, what was his first shift on the power play? You know, scores after missing 26 regular season games and establishes the the start to the Vegas Golden Knights postseason. I mean, it's <laughs> it's just the stuff of legend. And I mean that, you know, I speak of, of Mark Stone. I mean, the Vegas Golden Knights were incredibly unlucky and incredibly lucky. Unlucky that this guy lacerated his spleen and missed a huge chunk of the regular season. And then incredibly lucky that magically he's able to go in game one of the playoffs. No different than he was last year. So, yeah, I, I'm sure that uh, – let's see how the series plays out. I'm a big fan of the Dallas Stars. I wouldn't be surprised if they come out of the West. But to do that, clearly they've got to find a way to even this series and eliminate the Vegas Golden Knights. But let's say it does go the way of the Vegas Golden Knights. Yeah, there's going to be some hand-wringing in Dallas from ownership down – but I'm sure there'll be some choice words for the head office of the National Hockey League as well, just given the optics of how yeah. things have gone here for Vegas and their health department. Yeah, the hand wringing uh, continues around these parts <laughs> as well regarding that. But uh, yeah, we'll let you go here, Darren. Once again, really appreciate your time, man. I know it's a busy season for you. So uh, yeah. enjoy tonight and we'll talk next week. All right, guys. Have a good one.
There you have it, TSN uh, Hockey Insider Darren Dreger joining us this morning, courtesy Pro-Am Sports. Uh, They bring you all your hockey insiders and analysts during the season, your locally owned sports memorabilia and apparel specialists. You can find them just north of the Yellowhead, St. Albert Trail, 128th Ave, or visit them online at proamsports.ca. Like you, they are sports nerds and AM nasties, too. Just a bit of a programming note. We do uh, apologize. Apologies for the uh, house band. We know you love Whale and the Wolf. We don't want to make you sick of them. (laughs) And I, you know, yeah, 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 keep it down in there, you Vegabond. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, and I know you wanted to hear Dreger, so I, I do apologize if you're on the TuneIn app. I do believe it's the TuneIn app that was maybe giving the most trouble. But uh, please let us know. Once again, we don't have a vast engineering department that uh, get to these issues, but we do rely on you, the user. Um, so if you are experiencing issues, whether it be on the iHeart TuneIn, just let us know politely. We'll be on it. We're monitoring the situation, and hopefully we get that rectified soon. But uh, multiple ways to listen or view the show. So if you are, we're, we're on one of those platforms that was giving you a bit of grief, maybe a little too much whale in the wolf in your ears this morning. Uh, just head over to one of the other platforms, iHeart, tune in, and of course on YouTube. But we do apologize. We are on it. Uh, but please, please let us know any little thing. Uh, because if we don't know, we can't make it better. So it's it's this symbiotic relationship of kind of uh, working together, striving to get you the best EST that we can get you. But uh, there was yeah. a there was a lot of I really like whale in the wolf. Yeah, but they're good, but. Not- this yeah, much. Yeah, I wanted to hear what Trigger had to say. Yeah, af- absolutely. Yeah. And uh, I mean, I know we we're all here for the Austin Matthews 70 goal talk. I had to get that out there. They did mention that on the broadcast, right? Quite right. Wasn't that the uh, the play by play 70 goal? Was it, was it Cuthbert? Was it? Uh, S- yes. Uh, somebody alluded to it on the Sportsnet broadcast that, se- uh, that okay. Austin Matthews had just scored his 70th goal of the campaign. Shoot me. What, yeah, are, I mean, what, I, are, we, what are we doing here? Hyman scored his 57th. <laughs> there you go, Zach. If we're still continuing, why not? Yeah, what are yeah. we doing here? Now I must say, let let's get on the thumbs. Let's do it. We're going for a run. We well, might as well do that now because it looks like YouTube is your safe haven for digesting the you, Nielsen you, show you this morning. Well. As, as I'm just apologizing for everything, and then iHeart cuts out. So iHeart and tune in, having a little bit of difficult. What's going on with the TV? Now we're. Now we're Zach, really what's rolling, going on here? What are we doing? We're going to watch a movie here? Yeah, what are we going to watch? I don't mind this. Yeah, a little, mm. little cartoon action. There we go. Popeye's ah. Louisiana Kitchen Studio. Get that. See, it is a real TV, TV everybody. TV there. It was now, Cuthbert. It, Tripper names names. Uh, breaking news coming up uh, in Confessions. I must say, you're going to want to smash that thumbs up button to hear the inter-office confession. This is great. Uh, glue guy has been teasing it, and I want names. He says he's got I'm names. giving names. What did you say? You described it as, as a hot and heavy and deep or something like that? Uh, I, hot, heavy, deep, I succulent. Thought, succ- I thought he was talking about a pizza pie, but uh, I was wrong. Uh, hey, I, I must also say, Colin the Amish man might be in for text of the day right now. Is he now. in there? What's he, he is. What's he, he is. Saying here? He, uh, it's a whale in the wolf text no, regarding their uh, audio <laughs> no, there's overplay. plenty of those. <laughs> he said, you might say glue guy is... Sticking around. Come on! I smell an A&W date for uh, the <laughs> Amish man there, but uh, if you can beat that, 780-218-9999 is the number to text. Um, my brother does text in basis for Whale and the Wolf. If you guys want more Whale and the Wolf, you can find <laughs> us on Spotify, Apple Music, and anywhere else you get your music. So if you haven't had your fill enough yet uh, this morning, we jest, but we're on it. We're uh, we're trying to get that going, but please bear with us here. I'm, we're not doing it to piss you off. So uh, if you are on one of those iHeart tune-ins, just uh, quickly shift over if you can to the YouTube and uh, hit the like, hit the sub, do whatever you got to do um, to get the EST in you today. We do have a uh, Cool Bet Canada hotline of the day right now, brought to you by our good friends over at Cool Bet. Uh, stay cool, bet responsibly. Jay, you did say you'd have a bit of a lean, a bit of a sprinkle. Where are you going tonight? Well, I, you know, I, I'm not trying to build a, a prop here. I'm just going with with what I think is going to happen, and I feel like what we just alluded to with Dregs uh, speaking about this Avalanche Jet series, mm-hmm. I think you're going to see a very, very determined Colorado Avalanche group led by who most are saying will win the Hart Trophy in Nathan McKinnon. I'm going over two and a half total points for Nathan McKinnon, over two and a half points at plus 255. That is a really good return for somebody that could turn in numbers like Connor did last night. Um, And given the way that this this series started, it looks like uh, goals will be scored. So over 
Two and a half points for Nathan McKinnon at plus 255. That is the Cool Bet Hotline. Love it. Riding with the Avs, riding with uh, Nate Mack. We're riding. Over two and a half points, plus 255. Avalanche Jets later tonight. Stanley Cup playoffs continuing. That is your Cool Bet Canada Hotline of the Day, courtesy Cool Bet. And the glue guy, Jay Milne, and we appreciate hey, that. Just, Follow him to the bank. Did you see uh, uh, our, our dearest Matthew Awanek's uh, cool bet last night? His parlay he hit? Did he construct? He, had a, a bet he constructed a parlay. Yeah. Here it was. Connor McDavid, two plus points. Leon Dreisaitl, one plus <laughs> goal. Nugent Hopin, Hopkins, one point. And Edmonton Oilers to win. Plus 600 Cash it. Yeah, and that's a 10-set bent for Matthew Iwanek, so he's uh, went a, a buck richer or something like that. We congratulate him. That, that's 60 cents. One. That's a cute bet of all those numbers. I mean, all that they just hit You can get half a small coffee. A little more pocket change for Matt Iwanek this morning. He's going to love that as his cool bet account skyrockets to, uh, what, eclipsing 20 bucks now maybe? he's got That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. I love following him betting because it's, it's on such a scale that it's almost it's undetectable. Right, but, but I mean, the... the if you if you grow that account, I love it. no, you know, that's, I'm here. That's for the incredible. Story. I'm here for the story. It's it's just chipping away. He's eating an elephant bite by bite. Uh, Seven eight zero two and eight ninety nine ninety nine is the number to text. This one flies in unsigned. A little lengthy. Let you chew on this. We're going to have a weekly confessions coming up in a matter of minutes. Of course, your Vegas keyword on the way as well. That's coming up at around 740, so be by your phones. Hey, boys, fantastic win, and that's caps lot, capitalized uh, for the boys, to which I assume he or she means the Oilers, but I have two things that bothered me in the last 10 minutes. And they do mean the Oilers. McDavid had an end-to-end rocket rush the last 10 minutes when we're up three or four goals. There's a massive potential of injury here, and Knobloch should be telling about absolutely none of that. Hyman took some nasty hits and slashes the last bit of the game when it was obviously out of reach. If you're Hyman, why wouldn't you give some nasty, nasty hacks back? Who cares if you take a penalty at this point? If you're blowing out a team, don't let them take liberties and bruises on you. Jay, um, there was some uh, there was some Tom Fooley. I do believe it was Trevor Moore. Uh, who did he take out? He took out somebody there late in the game, and I think the nasty chat can probably help me out here as well. Uh, but Moore got two minutes. I, I think you could have well, you could have upped that, maybe do a little something more. I know the home fans were kind of wanting that a bit more, but this is what I said, and this is what I cautioned in a series with the LA Kings: is to when when the when the car gets off the road a bit, they're really going to roll up their sleeves and and. Do the dirty. Well, and that's what they thought bringing in a guy like Pierre-Luc Dubois would do. And, and it, ultimately, last night, it seemed to, to have backfired. Those two penalties by Moore and Dubois led directly to Oilers' goals. The Moore penalty was was the one that was, uh, I guess you could say, the nail in the coffin for game one. Mm-hmm. Um, but was it a dirty hit? Uh, no. I mean, is there going to be a meeting at the NHL headquarters? I don't think so. But, I mean, obviously what the Kings were doing is that game, at you know, was was somewhat out of out of balance. So what else do you do is try beat up some of those players. It's a long series. It's a long playoffs. Uh, any sort of you know nit you know nicks scrapes scratches all play their part in the in the way that Dayarnay is going to play. Now I there were no reports that Dayarnay was was injured or is is he was saying anything. Owie really loud, but he should be. Owie! The big oak should be okay. Hey, thank think, you for the nasty yeah. chat for getting that in there as well. And I, I think it's because he's so damn tall it can't that hurt. it looked like way worse than it was. It's like a small guy with that center of gravity. He's <laughs> yeah. kind of the opposite. You can't really hurt him anywhere. Oh. He's too big, too much surface area to cover. Boom. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it, it, the bigger they are, the harder they yeah. fall. So, um, but I, to the to the Texas point, I don't think the the Oilers necessarily need to mix it up in that regard. I mean, you don't need to enter that arena. They want to drag you down to that arena. You're up here getting goals and collecting points and winning games, and they're down here. I would say though, just try to try to stay out of the way. Don't don't don't. Uh, you know what I'm saying here. The Kings will get a little dangerous, and I do believe if this series does go on and it kind of gets more and more out of sight, that I would be kind of wrapping my top dogs in a bit of loose bubble wrap, shall we say, if you know what I mean. The I Kings don't want are, them in those scrums. I mean, hello, we've played the Kings for the last three years. I mean, Oilers fans have seen this. We, you know... It's only that it's warning. I, that's, we know, and but... You know, you should know better. They're a dangerous team. Adrian Campe was, you know... Started getting a little roll, a little roll to his game last night. He is a dangerous player. He is a game changer. If he's rolling, uh, Fiala gets rolling. I mean that team. And and granted, how many power plays did they have? Two or three? I mean two to yeah. to, to, to the Oilers. You know, mm, four three, or whatever. You know, yeah, so. four or five. Yeah. So I mean, 
you're gonna the pendulum you're gonna, swings. The, <laughs> that's gonna even up eventually. And if if their big guns can start moving the way that the Oilers' big guns are, then yeah, there is there is. I mean, there's, there's no. It was a great win. But I I got news for you. That's all it is. It's one win. It's a W. There's no. But it was so good. <laughs> it was great. And you know what? It was it was not a concerning win. Yeah. It was a good heartfelt win that I think Oilers fans needed to see, wanted to see. But now is the time to not go full Oilers here and just rest on your laurels and say, hey, we've got this. We've got the game plan. No, 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 no. This is a Kings team that you cannot sleep on. You just can't. They have the firepower. And I wonder the response too early in game two, just how both of those teams set up and come at each other and, and how, how much the Kings do push. And, and you're right. What, what Oilers do we see? And I do think, though, to answer your question, I do think it's different. I, and this is just from... from Initial reaction post game, just the mood of the team heading into this one. I, I do believe it's a little different, uh, but they have to go out and prove that. They have to prove it exactly. They have to go to game two and prove it um, because yeah, I, I mean everybody had a little bit of you know when that goal was disallowed, uh, where where it went in off uh, the player's glove. Yeah, 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 that was terrifying. That was two goals in the span of three four minutes, and the Kings had taken the game back. You know how? Throwing pucks on net, getting things that, you know, anything that was anything would go to the net, and lo and behold, good things happen. Zach, were you, you were a little nervous. I was sitting right beside you, and I, I could see a little bit of a, a you right. know, maybe a little a bit of sweat, sweat on feed. your brow. Huh? Yeah, I, wa- I was a little bit nervous. I know how lethal the Kings can be and are. They're a very deep team, and they almost come in waves because uh, the line matchups, like, you could send them out there. You just get a big body in front, they're a big team, and you get that screen and really anything can happen. And when that goal went off the glove, I believe it was Adrian Kempe. Uh, once again, that was before I think uh, he might have scored his actual goal. But um, to get that close to being back in the game almost is huge for a momentum swing. Uh, I think in the second period, they really brought it to the Oilers and it was spread throughout the game. Of course, some momentum going back in the Oilers' hands, but for game two, that really leaves a bit of worry. I think a lot of people discredit the Kings and the talent that they do have, and coming uh, into game two, they'll be, be firing on all cylinders, I think. Well, and that is one player you do not want to get hot is Adrian Kempe because he has had the Oilers' number in playoffs in years past. So, uh, you know, Oilers fans, let you know, Great win, but focus on game two. Move forward in game two. And, and, and like you said, Eric, yeah. it is a real, real test to see what Oilers we see. If we see that high flying, running and gunning, that you know top two lines going, uh, then I think they get it. They got it. They, you know, This is the maturity that you've been wanting to see for the last six, seven seasons. Finally, it's here. Yay. Hallelujah. Uh, if not... Then this could be a well, long series. I, it's it's very fascinating leading up to game two uh, tomorrow. RCN in the nasty chat. Utah's own Trevor Lewis, the disallowed goal going off his uh, his mitt and down last night, and a lot of people drawing up uh, comparisons uh, to Vinny getting that uh, that hit. A lot of people saying it shouldn't be uh, suspendable, but a lot of people pointing to a Josh Archibald episode from uh, years prior and getting a game. So. Uh, maybe something to keep an eye on. Archibald on Logan Stanley. That was a one gamer. So a lot of people saying that Moore's hit maybe should have a little more uh, punishment due. But we'll keep an eye on that. Let's get a sports update. Uh, Jay Mill will have a sports update brought to you by Park Mazda. We got weekly confessions smack dab after that. And then be by your phone. We'll have the fly YEG word for Vegas last week to qualify. Uh, that's coming up at around 740 as well. But uh, let's uh, get a well-versed roundup of the night it was in the sports world with Jay Milne and a sports update for Park Master. Zach Hyman scored his first ever postseason hat trick as the Oilers went on to defeat the Kings 7-4 to in Game 1 of the Western Conference quarterfinals. Edmonton was firing on all cylinders as McDavid assisted on five goals, while Drysaddle had a goal and an assist. Stuart Skinner was also solid in net as he stopped 33 shots. Game 2 goes Wednesday as the Oilers look to keep things rolling. The Golden Knights manage to hold on as they take the dub against the Stars 4-3. Game 2 of the Eastern Conference quarterfinals saw the Leafs tie up the series for, with a 4-3 win over the Bruins. The Islanders held a 3-1 lead over the Hurricanes heading into the third period and then completely fell apart, allowing three goals in the span of two minutes and eventually fell 5-3. 
The Hurricanes take a 2 nothing stranglehold on that series. Just in this morning from our very own Zacticum. <laughs> the Flyers signed goalie Fedotov to a two-year, $6.5 million extension. In the NBA, Canadian Jamal Murray hit an insane game-winning buzzer beater to lift the Nuggets to a 101-99 victory over the Lakers. The Knicks take a 2-0 series lead over the 76ers as they win 104-101. And the Cavaliers also take a commanding 2-0 lead over the Magic with a 96-86 victory. The Blue Jays get their seventh win in their last nine games as they beat the Royals 5-3. This sports update has been brought to you by the staff at and Mitch Lewicki at Part Mazda. Mitch Lewicki, we should have taken him out back and shot him a long time ago. <laughs> If you're like me, you like to picture yourself in luxury, even though there's absolutely no way you could afford it. And if you can, well, even better. Thankfully, I picture myself in something that is luxury, but still absolutely affordable, like the all-new Mazda CX-90 from Park Mazda. With the new luxury features like facial recognition settings and quilted detail Napa leather seating, I can pretend to be comfortable with all of my proper settings activated without even touching a button, thanks to Mitch Lewicki and the great staff of Park Mazda. I like to picture Mitch Lewicki as newborn 8-pound, 6-ounce Mitch Lewicki. You can picture grown-up Mitch, or teenage Mitch, or bearded Mitch, or whoever you want. Park Mazda, your dealer for life in Sherwood Park off Y Road, Park Mazda Dossier. Seven thirty-seven. You're tuned into the Nielsen Show, EdmontonSportsTalk.com, the iHeart and TuneIn Radio apps, and in picture form on YouTube. We got the video going. Nasty chat rolling as well. Coming to you live from the Popeyes Louisiana Kitchen Studios. You can text seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. That is the Paris Jewelers inbox. Get your texts in now. Jay will be awarding a text of the day winner later on in the show. Twenty dollars to A and W. So get into that contest. You could be twenty bucks in A and W cash richer. And it is Lieutenant Eric in for Dustin Nielsen. He's wrapping up a family trip down in San Diego. He'll be back on the air Thursday morning. Jason Mill, glue guy with me, and Zach Tim behind the monitors as well. We're going to get straight into this next segment. It is time for your weekly confession, and it is brought to you by Spectrum Rental, where they confess to being ready to throw their shoes on the ice when Hyman had his breakaway. Get all of your spring cleanup or landscaping equipment at Spectrum Rental. Now is the time. Uh, Jay, I know you own vast acres of property out at your funny farm. I'm sure Spectrum Rental would have a few tools for you to kind of get that place looking uh, tip-top and, and heading into the season. But if you need some help on your yard or anything such as that, clean up landscaping, etc., Spectrum Rental is the place to go, and they bring you weekly confessions. Um, but you teased us, Jay, and a hell of a tease it has been this morning. You had descriptors of hot, heavy, and deep. You said it Succulent. has... Succulent. Suck- what is going on here? And it has something to do with Edmonton Sports Talk. So without any further ado, this grand confession, and I do hope you name names. I mean, this is really just as water cooler talk. This is almost for a meeting in the boardroom type of level topic. A name will be named, and I hope that I don't get reprimanded. Uh-oh. But I have to, uh, I have to, I have to confess. I have to confess. We have been, we were part of a group chat yesterday, a group text chat. Yes. Correct? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, you know, we're going around talking about all things Oilers, and 
one number on there I, I didn't have saved in my phone. And as the conversation continued, it was clear to me who this number was and who it belonged to. It's smart on you for patience. Yeah, I, I, I got a, I got the you gist get the of feel. it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? So I went ahead and I added that number to my contact list. And I then followed that up by texting Gager and saying these exact words. I thought it was me. I said, this is the only number I don't have in this riveting group chat. Must be my man, Gager. Question mark? (laughs) (laughs) Let the record show. (laughs) Gager did not respond to me. Are are you on red? Like he's 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 red yesterday. <laughs> now I will double down on this too, and say that Gager continued to respond to said group chat. Oh no! Posted a picture of his beautiful supper last night. Yes, he had a pulled pork sandwich yeah. and the two pack stad uh, two stack yes. two stack pad two pad two stack, pad stack pilsner. pilsner goes down a dream, but yet. He leaves me hanging. So my confession and my ask is, does Gager not like me? Am I am I on the outs with Gager? What did I do? Now, the man will have a chance to speak for himself because he is scheduled to be on this show I today. I love how the schedule makers work, hey? At hey, 8.30. Well, lo and behold, we will come face to face. And Gager will have no choice. But to answer me and, and, and answer why he left me unread. A quick confession as well is I wasn't in one of these group texts early in the early in the EST uh, you know campaign here, and people were, ah, the group text last night. And I said I, I wasn't I don't know and I and I wasn't part of it. I just felt a little bad. And then Gager was talking about it and he didn't have me in the group text. So he's he's not shall we say the uh, like he's he's not always on the phone in texting. It, it, he, he, he handles texting more like an actual phone call. He'll, he'll turn his phone on to text, and then when he's done, he'll turn his phone off and put it in the drawer, close it, and, you know. So, I mean, that, that, that's my confession. I, I went red by who I suppose is Gager. Still on red. I think it's Gager. Now, you don't even have the confirmation that it is, right? Uh, I mean, it, it, it clearly is. Well, clearly but... by the picture he sent last night, which yeah, I had it now must be. coined the ti- in the my timeline. Is, yeah, is the timeline is, uh, is yeah. quite damning for, uh, yeah, for a I'd one walking so. gate. Yeah, yeah. So I, uh, I, I, I confess I'm a little nervous. I'm a little, I'm a little scared. I'm a little tepid. Uh, I don't know where well, our relationship stands at this, at this, at, at 7:42 and 54 seconds in the AM. I don't know if Joaquin Gage likes. Glue guy. Now, Engager's, uh, I guess, defense. You're taking his defense. Say. You're the defense. Okay. Well, when you leave people on red, I guess uh, I've done that a few times. I do that. Yeah, yeah. What? When there's, uh, I, when there's nothing really to add to something, there he could have said, "Yes, this is Gager. I am Joaquin for sure." But he chose not to. I, I think a maybe thumbs up would have sufficed. A thumbs up would have sufficed. And you would have said, "Finger, uh, whatever." Uh, ha, ha, you know that type of thing. Yeah. But but to just silence the silence is deafening. I think is what you're, but I love you taking the defense. We've all been there. I, I I've done it too. You you miss a text, you you see it, and then you just kind of go off to another one. Um, Strummy, this is a great one. You should text this in. You want to come after that A and W G C? Gager was horsing around. They don't like glue. Uh, then Dean Belanger just, I mean, he's ripping the bandaid off. He big timed you. That's, I mean, that's hey, that, it, it, that's maybe the answer you don't want to hear, but it's the answer you're gonna have to hear. No, right? I'm okay with that because if somebody can big time anybody around here, it's, it's Joaquin. It's Gage. Gage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the guy. Hello, I understand that, but maybe and maybe it's a maybe it's like a little bit of a a, a rookie uh, thing, initiation. Oh, no, he's hazing you, hazing yeah, me. Yeah, yeah. You know. <laughs> Although yeah. I did read the, the the reports and the rules and regs from Matt Ewanek, and it it's clearly said read. no hazing. <laughs> yes. Well, Big G asks, did you say who you were? You did. You did introduce yourself in the text, right? You did mention your name. I didn't. Can you read that again? What you said to him? Because wow. we got. He's just got this lost is good. In this this whole, is good uh, for my soul. Yeah. Well, it, <laughs> this is good for my soul. I so all I said was, "This is the only number I don't have in this riveting group chat." Strummy, you're on fire, be my man, Gager. Oh my gosh, maybe I was the one that was at fault here. You haven't even you haven't even introduced. Should I yourself. text right now? Should we do it live? Should oh, I, I say, think so. Just and see what happens. Blue guy, J. Mill. By the way. By the way, B- BTW. BTW. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is 
glue guy. And then maybe an LOL just to kind of, you know. Look. FYI. Mill. Should I give Rolf like a, a heart emoji? Sure, yeah, whatever. I mean, you listen to your heart there. But I, 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 saying who you are, I think, would go a long way. He now thinks this is some sort of robo text. Proof. Might even be AI. Blue guy Gmail. There you go. I mean, yeah, you could have. Who knows? Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. This was, this was on my heart. This was something that I, I thought, what did I do? Feel better now. You can breathe. You must have. You didn't sleep a wink last night. You were tossing and turning. I did not sleep. All thanks to Walking Gage. Uh, as Strummy says, uh, Walking Gage, more like no talking Gage. <laughs> He's on fire here. Amish Man 19, first the jerky, and now leaving Glue Guy on red. Shame, shame. We have a we have a Vegas keyword to get to quickly as well. We're going to keep you hanging on. I, I know Fergie's prostate is listening and or watching, and he was at Hudson's last night, and he loves when we toy around with the keyword and just kind of yeah, like a like a cat and a mouse. But here, Zach, right here. you had we'll get that. You had a confession, Zach, real quickly for uh, Spectrum Rental. Yeah, you got that off your chest, and I have something that I have to get off my chest. I have a playoff superstition where I bring out all of my Oilers jerseys, hang them up in the basement, okay. you know. Let them breathe, kind of. Your shrine. My shrine Light of a few uh, candles and incense, and yeah, and uh, set up a couple, you know, bobbleheads or whatever I do, and yeah. around the circle. But you know, I forgot to hang up one jersey, and the Oilers won last night. Yes. Do I hang up the jersey? No. That is no. You, no. Whatever is that you the, did, like you can't. That's my confession: is that I didn't hang up the jersey, and usually I would. I'd hang up every one, but I missed one. Jersey, and even the one that I was wearing at Hudson's, I got home, hung it up right away. Were you wearing that maroon one again last yep. night, the orange maroon? Um, do, do you want to explain which jersey it was that you didn't hang up and maybe why? It was just an innocent mistake, correct? You weren't trying to, oh, I don't want this one here. Like, uh, you know, no, it wasn't it, an Adam Ernie jersey, hey? that you. <laughs> no, it was an innocent mistake, but at the same time, it isn't a real player on the back okay, of the jersey. Well, that's, yeah, that works. So, I mean... Every single Oilers jersey I've hung up for however many years now, three or four years, each time the Oilers made it to the playoffs for game one, that'd be my ritual to get set for the game. Mm -hmm. But the jersey that I didn't hang up is actually a custom jersey with my own name. So it, I, I had to confess that I didn't hang it up, but was that the right move? And do I hang it up? I think that it was it. the right move. And you doing that paved the way for an Oilers game one win. Yep. So... And I'd, you can you can send your thanks into Zach to him right now via the nasty chatter seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. I'll say Zach, uh, fourth star of the evening. I, I think I, I no longer Stuart Skinner. It's you. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. Okay, where's that? Uh, you got to get that sheet here. What's the? Uh... We made you wait long enough. Top I, secret. Top <laughs> secret. Top secret. It's the final week of qualifying here, uh, and, and and it's less than a week. It's Tuesday today. We'll be giving out the trip Friday on the Nielsen Show wow. right here. Um, it's the EST Yag Fly Away. Yeah, your next chance after this will be on the Hangout 9 to 11 this morning. Matt, I want to YouTube Trev, myself, and Zach to deputizing as well. Uh, but this is your chance to win a trip to Vegas, two nonstop flights, three nights accommodation, and tickets for a Cirque show, Cirque du Soleil. Presented by Fly YEG and the LVCVA. Non-stop flights to over 50 destinations. Your sports trip with a non-stop flight from Fly YEG. That's where it starts. www.flyyeg.com for more. I'm going to read a word. Zach is going to have it on the screen. You're going to text it in. 780-218-9999. We're going to let those texts fly in. Zach's going to hit the randomizer. We're going to pick a lucky text. Random lucky text. We're going to give that number a call, so be by your phone. Text in this word and be by your phone. 780-218-9999. The word today, actually not even a word today. It's, it's an acronym. Another acronym popping up here in the, uh, in the keyword list. Text in this word, 780-218-9999. P-C-L. Pistol. Pistle, pistle. Text PCL seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. I thought we were talking construction, but you corrected me this morning. It was Pacific the Coast League. Maddie, Maddie's Maddie, out Maddie, foxing me again. That Maddie, you gotta go. Pacific Coast League. So don't text Pacific Coast League. Text PCL seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine. Let that rest for a second, but be by that phone. And Zach Tickham is going to give somebody a lucky call here, and uh, we'll get to them shortly. 780-218-9999. Um, 
and get that text. It's not even a long word this morning. I mean, everybody should be playing this one. It's three letters for crying out loud. You can kind of, this would, I don't know, there's probably autocorrects. You could just kind of voice to text type of thing. Uh, but 780-289-9999, P-C-L. And you could be uh, qualified into that trip for Vegas. Once again, it is the Fly Y-E-G and L-V-C-V-A nonstop flight from Edmonton to Vegas, two flights, three nights accommodation, tickets to a Cirque du Soleil show. For more, www.flyyeg.com. Our great partners up there. And uh, we did the trip. It was perfect. Nonstop. I raw dogged it, too. I brought a Star Wars novel, and that was it. Wow. Sat in the middle both times. Is That's what you do. That's that's what a glue guy does, right, Jay? Sure. You know that glue. You say, I'll, I'll sit in the middle. I'll, I'll take this one. So well, I sat in the middle, and I just sat there, and it was great. First, you just got to say to Dustin, like, what seat do you want? Because he's so big. Yeah, he was he was Mr. Isle, which yeah, was good. Yeah, it's great. He kind of had that right leg was kind of, you know, hooking I out. I know, I know, until they come by with the, the, well, the carts. Well, then it's a bit of a, yeah. And, and maybe you dozed <laughs> yeah. off a bit, and they take off your kneecap. Yeah. Then it's not fun. Matty, I want to quit the window, but uh, I don't mind. This Vegas trip, uh, it's pretty good to just sit and stare, both on the way down and then that... Uh, that dizzying trip home. PCL seven eight zero two eight ninety nine ninety nine. And Probably my Zach favorite part of calls. sitting in this chair is during this this contest is just seeing the inbox go bananas. It's wild, isn't it? Cool? It's just it's like a. I don't know what I would uh, compare it to, but some sort of a ticker just uh, and PCL just flying through. So, yeah. and I know everybody's uh, there's strategy to this. I know people are kind of getting their uh, long lost cousins whom they haven't spoken to in 10, 20 years, friends, uh, exes, that type of thing. But uh, you got to text this in and you got to try for the trip. Seven eight zero two eight ninety nine ninety nine PCL is the word. Next chance to qualify coming up on the Hangout this morning, nine to eleven with Matt Iwanek. Another chance during the lock shop, and as well later today with uh, two guys and a goalie. Also, thoughts on the game last night? Nasty chat, 780-218-9999 if you want. I mean, power play was clicking. The big dogs were eating. I know that I confessed, I guess, to Darren Dreger, to which my thoughts on this series changed last night post-game. I do, uh, I'm a lot more bullish on the Oilers now. However, um, I, I do have that uh, duality within me. And uh, we cannot, we will not sleep on the Kings. The, the Oilers won't. I'm sure the team won't. But perhaps us fans can get a little fad happy over a game one win, to which I think the score does flatter the Kings a little bit. Um, but it's going to be a tough out. It's going to be a tough team. And, uh, you know, what might happen as well with the success that the Oilers might have as we play out this series, it's going to get a lot tougher, a lot chippier, a lot grittier, and a lot more of those, shall we say, air quotes, Cheap actions uh, might be coming from from the LA direction. Well, and and, and I just must say, there's there's been a couple sentiments shared in the, in the Paris Jewelers inbox. Hit us up at seven eight zero two one eight ninety nine ninety nine, or hit us up on the nasty chat. And I uh, am being being called the the glue sniffing guy now because of my take that that was not a cheap hit on. One Vinny DeHarnay. I think, but but when we talk about the NHL or anything, you have to expect the opposite. Well, what I what so, I, so are you are you was your answering like what you think the NHL would do or what you would? That's that's yeah. what I thought. I, I, that's, I said, that's fine. What I thought was that there will be no action taken by the the, uh, the NHL yeah. And, yeah. and and people saying that I'm sniffing my own supply. <laughs> I think <laughs> which and, and, is lovely. I, well, I love it. But but at the end of the day, was it uh, was it a little bit. Was it a borderline? Potentially. Is the NHL going to do anything about it? Is there going to be action here? No. And then uh, Krager came in on the Paris Jewelers inbox. Oilers up 6-2 with four minutes left to play, and then the crowd starts the wave. Almost caused a catastrophe. Can I please kindly request that you tell Oilers fans that at Rogers Place to save the wave for the final moments of a game. 6-2 to game. Last minute is okay for the wave. Where? What say you about the wave? Good I did Lord. notice. I did see Twitter lighting up as I soon as know. as soon as the Oilers. I think they were up, they were up four nothing going into the second, and some person uh, um, was starting the wave, and uh, he was not that very well received. I just. I'm not policing this, and I'm not going to tell again. Telling people how to fan, I I don't I don't agree with that. But you don't, you know, I I, I just. 
Like if you want to cheer when the plane lands, if you if you win the Vegas flyaway and, and you like to applaud when they land the plane, I mean, I, look, go for it. But it's just we're all sitting around going, yeah, I don't know if you should be doing that. I, it's the same. There are times. There are natural, organic times, I think, when that happens. To me, the wave is when the fans are saying, this game is so out of sight, I don't need to pay attention anymore. And we're going to create yeah. our own entertainment. That's kind of the wave. And that's why you stick it to the opposition to, be, to which this game is our, our home team has, has beaten the snot out of you so bad and so much that this isn't even worth watching anymore. We're going to create our own entertainment in the stands. That, to me, is what the wave illustrates. And that, to me, is the time that it should be kind of used and taken out. Now, if you want to do it 4 nothing up in the second, I mean, yeah, strange flex, but I'm not going to sit here and, and, and poo-poo you for it. I, I do think there are people that out there, when the wave does start, they actively want the opposition to get back in the game to prove their theory correct that it is the wave affecting everything, which it is not. Which it is not. We've talked about injuries all season long. We've knocked on this wooden table as much, too. What we say and do has no effect, unless it's Dustin Nielsen calling a shutout midway through a game in Washington earlier in the season. <laughs> that that happens, and that turns the season around. But give me a break. I mean, if people want to do the wave, if people want to... I don't care. Do you think if the Oilers, care. If the Oilers go on a run here, do you think that that watch party that we had, the live stream of the Oilers Capitals afternoon game, will will be in the uh, in the DVD, the playoff DVD? I, I think it. Makes, I think it must. Yeah, be I, I think we'd get a clip on Oilers Plus somewhere along the way, like just just a blurb, just a flash. You know, bam, this happened. Bam. Um, CJ in LA says says it right. A second period wave is never a good idea. I agree. Kings also scored multiple times after Talbot chance, and nobody's complaining. How is that any different? LTE, yeah, LTE. How is that any? I don't care. I just said I don't care. Nobody's you, you standing up when if, they chant. If you want to start either. the wave after the national anthem, I'm fine with it. I just think it's you know again to to me and my and my definition of how I see that particular cheer and moment is for when everything's like signed, sealed, and delivered, and it's we're gonna make our own fun in the stands because this game is so far out of reach. Now again, if you, again, if you want to do it zero zero to start the game, I I, I don't care. Make make that a thing. I, sure. Uh, chant Talbot, be, but I, uh, I, I just want more. I want more chants. I want you to, I, I, chant Cameron for crying out loud. I know his last name is Talbot, but Cameron. I mean, that would only his mom calls him Cameron. Do something like that. Like really, I, I'm all for it. Wave all game if you want. Okay, I just want to get on the record. I'm not policing anybody. I How just do you really it, feel about it? I just find it odd. I, I'm getting really. I'm getting hot here. Oh no! <laughs> I, just, I'm getting, I don't want to get hot. I, I said I wouldn't get hot. I, I mean, I just, oh, LTE, getting it's, down. Uh, and and people, of course, will be. Uh, you know, Jim says kings suck. That's a, an outstanding uh, uh, message. Might be text of the day. Chat. Well, <laughs> get that in, Jim. Uh, Seven zero two and eight ninety nine ninety nine. Uh, too many non-hockey guys attending. Ooh, that comes in from uh, Toons is the driving cat. Non-hockey guys. Hey, yeah, yeah, the casual fan paying, what, $10,000 for a seat yeah. there last night. Just the people from the streets. Um, is this I Got Beef? No, it's not, but I'm, it's, it's, we're, get, we're getting there. Um, nothing more cocky than a curse chat at a goalie 10 minutes into a game. Yeah, but chanting the goalie's name is trying to get him off his... Yeah, that, that's, that's different that's than fine. a wave. That's I, fine. I just... that's, that's, that's this part of having home ice. I... Let's change the subject. Zach, to come, do we have a winner for, Lu- for Lieutenant Eric to just breathe and, 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 and have some positive vibes? As, as And I'm sorry, I brought up the, the wave no, I'm thing. Sorry. I'm sorry. I, I, I'm I, getting it. I'll get, I'll get over it. I haven't been mad since the 90s, Jay. I, I'm not going to start today. <laughs> Who's the uh, lucky qualifier today? Uh, Northside Sandwich is a lucky qualifier North for... Northside Sandwich. Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, white, brown, or rye? Ho! Oh, rye. My man. That's right, the only that's way, the only way to fly. Yeah, uh, And that's going to help you a lot in this. Uh, you are qual- first time qualified Northside Sandwich for this uh, flyway to Vegas? It is, yeah. Perfect. Uh, you sound like an eager young chap. Are you? Have you been down there before? And uh, who or what would you bring with you? I have been down there before quite a few times. And I would likely be taking my wife with me okay and is that usually your partner in crime when going down there or have the previous trips been just parties with the boys and this would be a nice time with the wife to try to change it up a bit no she, she's the partner in crime in vegas for sure love it love it well uh good luck to yourself and uh, mrs uh sandwich and uh we hope you guys uh you know good luck in the qualifying and again you can qualify again so next chance will be during the hangout later today 9 to 11 uh good luck man and uh we might be uh, picking your name come friday well, I won't be doing the wave, that's for sure. 
<laughs> My man. Only do it when the game's out of sight, of course. Uh, I police that. Northside Sandwich, your qualifier this morning. Your next chance, as mentioned, coming up in the Hangout 9-11 to 11 with Matthew Iwanek. Uh, myself, uh, Zach Tegum, and YouTube Trev will be all in the fray there, sitting on those hilarious chairs in the EST Hangout. Also have another chance to qualify during the lock shop today and taking you home with two guys and a goalie. And once again, we'll be doing the grand prize draw giveaway this Friday. Dustin Nielsen will be back, and we'll be giving uh, some lucky listener in qualifier a trip for two, two nonstop flights, three nights accommodation tickets for a Cirque du Soleil show presented by Fly YEG, the LVCVA. It's the EST Yeg Flyaway. Congratulations to Northside Sandwich. Get these words out of here. I don't want to see this again. PC only. Pacific Coast League. What are we doing here? Nasty chat, 7802 It is 8 o'clock. We'll did a uh, sports update, Claiborne Services. Jay will have that more on the uh, grand scope of the world in sports, both last night and leading into today. Um, if you want to play some kind of easy trivia right now, we got another uh, giveaway on the line, $25 to Mr. Mike, Steakhouse Casual. They got the 6 o'clock or logger there on tap as well. Um, so you could be at 25 units richer in Mr. Mike's cash this morning. Uh, text in 7802 if you want to play the kind of easy trivia. Zach Tim will give you a call. And uh, you know how we do. We'll play that coming up next after the break. Also, three questions too many on the way. Brought to you by Park Mazda. Joaquin Gage will be making an appearance on the show. Brought to you by Pro Am Sports. Uh, recapping last night and getting you set for Wednesday's game two. And that's all ahead of the wrap for William Huff to round out the show. But Jay Mill, sports update. And uh, once again, if you want to play kind of easy trivia, text 780-218-9999. And Zach Hyman scored his first ever postseason hat trick as the Oilers went on to defeat the Kings 7 4 in game one of the Western Conference quarterfinals. Edmonton was firing on all cylinders as McDavid assisted on five goals while Drysaddle had a goal and an assist. Stuart Skinner was also solid in net as he stopped 33 shots. Game two goes Wednesday as the Oilers look to keep things a rolling. The Golden Knights manage to hold on as they take the dub against the Stars 4 3. Game two of the Eastern Conference quarterfinals saw the Leafs tie up the series with a 4-3 win over the Bruins, and the Islanders held a 3-1 lead over the Hurricanes heading into the third period, and then completely fell apart, allowing three goals in the span of two minutes and eventually fell 5-3. Just in this morning from our very own Zacticum, the Flyers signed goalie Fedotov to a two-year $6.5 million extension. In the NBA, Canadian Jamal Murray hit an insane game-winning buzzer beater to lift the Nuggets to a 101-99 victory over the Lakers. The Knicks take a 2-0 series lead over the 76ers as they win 104-101. And the Cavaliers also take a commanding 2-0 lead over the Magic with a 96-86 victory. In the major leagues of baseball, the Blue Jays get their seventh win in their last nine as they beat the Royals 5-3. This sports update has been brought to you by Claiborne Services. Take your career to the next level with Claiborne Services. They are hiring all positions, including journeymen, bricklayers, and apprentices of all levels. Take advantage of their outstanding mentorship program and work with peace of mind knowing they are an industry leader in safety. Visit www.claiborneservices.com or make it easy and give Jeff a call at 780-910-6728. Baseball bat, a man with a tendency to overreact out of control. Oh, and so it goes. The kid with the promise, with the friends with the tats. Hopped in a car, now past the scalpel, stat six feet below. Oh, and so it
803. You're listening to The Nielsen Show, EdmontonSportsTalk.com, the iHeart TuneIn Radio apps, and on YouTube as well. Nasty Chat is... <laughs> yeah, it's enough out of you. You guys, enough have, had your, you guys have taken over the show, yeah, Will. We've had your Will. fill. We've had your, uh, <laughs> the quota. That's, that's a monthly quota from them yes, this morning. Wow. But, uh, nasty Chat's bumping, of course. Uh, get your text in. Paris Drew Lewis inbox. 780-218-9999 is the number to text. $20 on the line to A&W, of course, are coming to you live from the Red Hot Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen studio this morning uh, head over to Popeyes as well if you want to it's the thing with our sponsors and, and the people that we work with and the great businesses lots of options to soak up a game one hangover uh, maybe get a little bit of that nice nice uh, nice uh, greasy food in you a nice burger, like a nice fish flounder sandwich, some some poutine, some wings, that type of thing. So, uh, sop up all that booze that uh, would. You, uh, speaking for myself, anyways, I, I I assume a lot of you were uh, partying and doing much of the same last night. But uh, A and W Popeyes, Mister Mike's as well as we're gonna have a chance at that coming up here. Uh, Lieutenant Eric in for Dustin Nielsen, Jason Mail and Glue Guy as well, and Zach to come behind the monitors. I know a few people uh, chiming in this morning and wondering where the big guy is. I, I I love putting out there that he's moved to Calgary to start CSK. Yes, and, and Calgary Sports Talk. It's uh, no, he's on a family vacation, and and a family vacation that was uh, planned. I mean, early in the fall, to which and I think Tommy mentioned uh, he said the Oilers would be out of the playoffs. So I mean, at that point, <laughs> when you when you're planning and the team is uh, this close to the San Jose Sharks in the standings, you're like, huh, playoffs, not going to need him. So Dusty works a lot and he does a lot of workload with the CFL, Canadian Football League, and that's going to be starting up in earnest here very soon. So there is a bit of a brief window, albeit brief, for Dustin Nielsen to get away and uh, take some time with his family, although he has been working away down there in San Diego as well. But he'll be back on the show Thursday morning, back in the city Wednesday. I do believe he might be going to the game Wednesday night. Uh, but until then, uh, we'll be holding down the fort as best as we can and uh, trying to get you through this. It's games one and two. He's not pulling the full Dave Jameson uh, incident where he, oh, he missed it. He story. took a week of holidays, and the Oilers are in the playoffs, and then boom, it's it's out in Chicago. You have to tell the backstory advancing. on that a bit. Well, it's wild. He took it, – it's just nothing – you know, he's like, oh, I'll take a, a, I'll take a week, you know, and you – I mean, because you you have to. There are times this, to this take was the, off. This was the and season just, where it was the, uh, the, the COVID bu- the season. Bubble. The bubble, yeah, and you're you're kind of well, whatever, and <laughs> and it's kind of it's weird and wild, but you blink and you can miss it. So I, I think Dusty wasn't going to miss an Oilers loss. He was maybe a little concerned that the Oilers might be out of the series winning and on their way to round two before he returns. But no, he'll be back for games uh, three and four and to recap uh, game two Wednesday night. Uh, but without any further ado. Uh, who do we got playing kind of easy trivia this morning there, Zach Digum? We got Babbage Stash. Babbage Stash. Been a while since I've uh, heard that name or talked to that individual. How you doing this morning, man? I'm doing great, man. How about you? Good. Well, can't complain. Can't complain. Sounds like you're bright-eyed and bushy-tailed. Big night or what? Uh, stay at home with the family? Head down to the game? Moss Pit? Or uh, what were you doing? How were you digesting you know last night? I just watched it in the man cave last night, so just down in the basement. Man cave, game one. That's a steady start to the festivities. Um, you know you how betcha. this happens, though. $25 to Mr. Mike's on the line. Should be kind of easy. I'll start the ticker after uh, Jason Milne reads the first question, and you need uh, three out of five. Good luck, Babbage Stash. How many goals did Hyman score last night? That's, that, that's three, hat trick. Did Connor have over three assists last night? Over. Did the Dallas Stars win last night? No. Did the Islanders win last night? Definitely not. Nope. Are the sport ball goal songs the bomb? They're definitely the bomb. The bomb diggity. Oh, yeah. That's two thus far, shooter. Durant hit a three. Well, it looks like we've got a mistrial. Oh, hello. Four home runs tonight for Scooter Jeanette. Cutting it in for Second goal for him, third for Real Madrid. These goalies, their, their flexibility always amazes me. And on the plus side, we've also got a hung jury. And you can count on me waiting for you in the parking lot. Hit it. Big Alan Jackson concert. And I'm hanging with Wayne Gretzky. Kevin Smith, we just finished a game about a minute and a half ago. Smoke. Get going, ball. Get up. Get up. The bingo game is ready to roll. Dense smoke. Get up. My pillow. Get up. And Mario Lemire. Way Streets. down yonder on the Chattahoochee. <laughs> Unbelievable. 
hotter than a hoochie coochie. Get up! You know smoking is bad for your health, and it isn't grown up at all. Get up! Get up! Oh, you can count. Good for you. Whatever was going on on your show was so bad, my mom phoned me to warn me yeah. twice. Chasing that neon rainbow, living that honky tonk dream. Oh, God, stop it! All she had to do was just give me that way. Pull it down. I can't, I can't listen anymore. A clubby lube remix from The Vault. Um, that's got me... Uh, Feeling all sorts of nostalgic. Hey, if you do miss the big guy, though, Dustin Nielsen, please check out the Achy Breaky podcast. Uh, you can find those up uh, Apple, Spotify, as well, EdmontonSportsTalk.com. Um, the latest episode featuring Dwight Yoakam's Fast As You. It takes a bit of a turn, um, but it's a nice podcast if you want to, uh, you know, get involved with some uh, 90s country. We explore one song per episode brought to you by the River Cree Resort and Casino. And uh, it, it's 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 a little bit of fun. But if you do miss uh, little Dustin Nielsen here for the past week, uh, certainly uh, get on the latest episode, Dwight Yoakam as Fast As You, and that's the Achy Breaky Podcast, Spotify, Apple Music, and EdmontonSportsTalk.com. I got to say, I actually listened to that Achy Breaky what? podcast. I did. Get out of here. I did. First Another time confession. listening. <laughs> Is that a confession? So, uh, the Dwight Yoakam episode? Yeah. You start, and it was you start currently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was oh, fun. yeah. It, I, I loved it. It was hilarious. Okay, good. Well, some of the stories were great, and uh, I listened to the song after, and I liked it. Okay, yeah. I liked it. We I encourage listened. you to watch the music video prior, so you kind of have an idea, but that's fine, too. That, that's do, the yeah, next yeah. time. That's the goal next time. I was listening okay. to it uh, actually on the way back from here so i listened to the full thing on the way home and it was a great listen well i appreciate that zach and give us a five star rating because lone star is only a band not a rating right that's what you say the breaky there and that's something hey wow um we're gonna get into three questions too many right now but also the oilers scored a lot of goals last night seven actually at the old place we used to give out a mcmuffin breakfast um, and some traditions uh, come and go, uh, but one tradition that carried over was the playing of goal songs, and to which now the goal songs brought to you by Sportball. You want the best possible way to get your kid started in sports? It's Sportball. Your kid will have a smile on their face as they learn multiple sports. www.sportball.ca for more info on all the programs that they offer. Spring registration is open now. And we thank Sportball for shaping the children and getting them going in an athletic way and, and discovering all sorts of sports out there and also being the bringer of the goal songs for this Oilers season. Now, Jay, you did mention that we have a you know, a bit of a, an exercise to get through this morning, and we've been trying to do this throughout the week. Dusty's been gone, but the likes on YouTube. Make it big for uh, Poppy. Yeah, I'm not uh, not feeling a 317 right now. Uh, I think Those are rookie numbers. Well, I don't think. Yeah, we know we can do better. We must do let, better. Let, you know, let, let's get some goal songs going here. Let's okay, let's but, do it, and and but let's smash that thumbs up so Big Daddy, Big Daddy Diego knows that, uh, you know, everything's good here at the house. It's... You want to you want to let him know that we're surviving without him. You want you want to show him that we don't need him to hit these likes, <laughs> right? Like I mean, that's kind of the thing. And again, I don't want to be begging here, but we got a few goal songs. I'll play the usual suspects. If we do hit some sort of number, some benchmark. I mean, I'm looking at goal songs here. I'm looking at his name is Miko. I'm looking at Ryan Strom. I'm looking at Biggie Riggy. I'm looking at it's James Neal. I'm looking at Haas in here. I mean, whatever you want, I will do my best to provide it for you. If we hit some sort of benchmark, but I had a request for the Cavis Reed pump up song. I mean, sure, I anything's on the table. Sure, um, but here we go. Nuge can play. Brought to you by Sportball. Mustache, cause he's too young, but he's playing like a superstar. Oilers took him at number 93 on, and he's been great so far. No one was sure if he would make the team. Scott said his vision was the very best. Game winning goals in five point nights. It sure looks like he passed. Find you, baby, he was born to play Along 
Dry? Not. Dry, not. Ryan Nugent Hopkins uh, connecting last night. I know he was a player identified as, you know, someone to kind of get going and 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 make a difference for this squad postseason. And him, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, uh, announcing himself early last night, scoring on the power play set up by Leon and Connor. Uh, to put the Oilers in front 4 nothing last night. Hyman with the hat-trick, as we know. Uh, Bouchard, four assists. McDavid, five. Dreisaitl getting a goal. So we do have Hyman and Dreisaitl goal songs still to come as well via sport ball, and we appreciate them for that. But as mentioned, um, we can give you a little something else if you want to get those likes juiced up. So hit the like, hit the sub on YouTube, uh, pop on in. Let's see what we can do. I, I, I don't want to put anything out there. Into, uh, 700 is a great dream, and I'll always have it. Um, but just let's go in there. Let's just it's like okay it. to dream. Dare it's to okay dream. It's okay to dream. But it's, it's after game one. Let's, let's just get in there. Hit the likes. Why not? And I have been looking. Somebody wanted to bury the cheater, Mr. Talbato. We made a uh, Cam Talbot shutout song years back, and we, we constructed a – it was it was the picture of him in a robot, and it was kind of a you know, Talbato robot. But uh, I've been trying – I've been on the hunt for that song all morning long in our files, and I haven't been able to track it down yet. It's my white whale here, and I'm really trying to fuck – find it i just can't um it's not on any of the lists here and i know we have some old old goal songs and and such but but the Telbato one maybe maybe dusty removed it from the library given the series and the the importance of maybe it. he took the keys to the kingdom and, and put it in the safe when he went to san diego the secret one but anything else you want i mean you know, i'd be glad to provide it this morning um it is time for three questions too many and it's brought to you by the great staff at park mazda where dealer principal mitch lewicki is still covered in dry orange and blue paint this morning park mazda your dealer for life um, Jason Milne, can uh, you tell us where people can find you online so they can follow you and really know more about your day-to-day life? Yes, at Jason Milne, J-A-S-O-N, M-I-L-N-E. I am aging myself by how easy my Twitter and Instagram handles are because it's just that, at Jason Milne. It, it, there's nothing wrong with that, and I do believe that when Zach had that new fresh camera angle on you this morning, as we were calling it, the glue cam, um, somebody requesting maybe a, a farm report every once in a while. I Chicago would love to give a farm prices, report. That type of thing. You know, livestock, the whole bit. You can take us through the lentils and, and everything. Well, yesterday on the farm report, we had to uh, get down a new bale. As as you know, the the, the pasture isn't quite uh, ready to go for the horses. We're, we're trying to limit their access to the pasture so the grass can grow. Uh, so we had to bring down a bale, break it open. Uh, I have uh, a couple, a couple rain barrels I want to sell. Can I? Can I? Can you do that on this report? You can say, hey. Uh if well, the wanna... prices of rain barrels right now are extremely low, so it's probably best best for you to hold on to them, LTE, at this point. But we do have a breach. We do have a breach on the farm. We have a breach. Our goats are getting out. Okay. Uh, my wife seems to know where the breach is. Uh, we. I thought it was in one spot. Clearly, it's not as I repaired it, and they are still getting out. So that's the farm report. Breach is happening, and uh, it must be uh, it must be rectified. Business at EdmontonSportsTalk.com if you want to uh, inquire about perhaps sponsoring a uh, farm report from yours truly, glue guy, Jay Mill. Now, that would be something. Just to break up, every, every, you're a radio station. You know you made it as a radio station <laughs> where you include a, a midday kind of noon Chicago green prices in farm reports. So maybe we'll, we'll get something going on that. I know somebody requested a, uh, a sigh as well this morning. <sighs> There, see, I did that for you. I could find that the old uh, the Brazil slide. We love Stacy Brazil, great friend, and uh, used to do the newscasts on the old show. But a Brazil slide for you there as well as we uh, the likes continue to climb. So please hit that like button on YouTube, hit the sub, and uh, you know I got a few things we can we can fool around with here as we run out the show here on the final hour. I know Walking Gage will be on the way as well coming up, but uh, let's again dive into three questions too many. We know where to find you, Jay Zachium. Let's uh, give you a little chance to. Uh, Pump up yourself a bit here. You had some news earlier on the show. You'll be with Murray McCourt on the VIP Golf Show, producing that show Sundays, correct? When does that start? Can you give us a little info on that? Yeah, um, uh, it starts on this upcoming uh, Sunday, I think the 28th, I believe that day is, if I'm getting my dates correct. But yeah, I'll be producing that show every Sunday at 8 a.m. Perfect. The VIP Golf Show will be right here on EST, so start your Sunday morning learning some golf. I know uh, I've been to the driving range only a couple times now. Okay. I went once. 
Uh, so far this season, I plan on getting there out more and more. You've got I'm your short game that. nailed. Well, you, know, yeah, you just have yeah. to work on the uh, the drives and the and, and totally. where can people yeah. follow you on social media? Just so yeah, uh, uh, Zachary H M K everywhere. Uh, okay. Spelt just like Zachary Hyman. You know, okay. Z A C H A R Y everywhere. Instagram, uh, Twitter, TikTok. You know, and then that's where it's at, man. That's what I got. Give Zach him a follow. He's doing great work here at EST. And uh, once again, he's, he's the youth of today. So he's making his rounds in all the uh, hot social media apps. Uh, as we say. And again, you, Jason Milne, you have a Facebook. Look at that type of. This is the. Yeah, I'm, I'm really mostly two Facebook. different worlds. I'm 42. <laughs> it's, I don't even know what TikTok <laughs> is. Oh, I got, I got a Facebook. A, but... a, a who? A talk to you? You're on Facebook too? Well, I, I got I got all the, the like platforms, page, like but uh, page? Yeah. I don't got a fa- <laughs> no fan page. <laughs> but my my uh, last name is a little bit harder to to spell. It's Kubush, so it's very very Kubush. German. Kubush, K U B U S C H. I want listeners Zachary, to, yeah. to friend you on Facebook. I like that. That's kind of Become my yeah. friend. Why you guys not? are my friends. The nasties are my friends. So friends, no, more like nice. family. Zachary, They're family. Yeah. Extended, friend, hey? friends can be family. You know, you make you make your family your own. I believe that's the Swap and Shop LT, my favorite small town radio segment. Oh, mine as well, and they are disappearing uh, all over the place. But I think we could resurrect that here with a nice little. I think it would be you, you've hilarious. You've been hawking furniture. You know how to kind of move yeah. pieces around. People want something. You connect them to something, right? It's. I mean, give the daily grain price. Give the you know, like, nasty like swap old and shop. school. Yeah, farm if report. nasties want to barter with things. Like I have a yeah. I have a butter churner. You know, right. Fergie's prostate has a butter churner, and Tube Socks has a, uh, you know, uh, a lint roller, and they, they come together, and uh, you know, yeah, I've been wanting to upgrade my coffee maker. And you make what it do you happen. got? <laughs> yes, I've got uh, panels for <laughs> for the goats. Oh boy, Mister Talbato, he's trying. I am Barry the Cheater. I'm like Connor Brown trying to get that goal. I'm trying. I I, I probably won't find the song, but maybe I will if we get to 700 likes. Who knows? One eyed Pete came in and 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 hit a nail the nail on the head, and he says we should, we should bring back Russ Dratwa for the Farm Report. That would be interesting <laughs> as well. Yeah, no. <laughs> I, I no, it's got to be glue guy. It's got to be the farm cam, the glue cam. Um, glue I think, cam. I think. I think we got an idea here. We I think we have something down. here. I think we table it to Iwanek. We get our ducks in a row. We we create a portfolio. Maybe Zach can, we can construct a PowerPoint, a quick you know forty five minute PowerPoint, and we yes blow his mind one of these afternoons. Um, question number one: four, three questions too many. Where were you? And I'll ask this to you, Jason Milton, and Zach, him if you want to chime in. I know you're busy doing work there. But where were you when Austin Matthews scored his 70th goal of the season? Well, I was uh, driving to uh, Hudson's West Edmonton Mall. Okay, because these memorable moments, you you, you, you just seldom can't forget. forget you what just you were forget. doing, where you were, what you were eating, or the smells at the time. Actually, I was just crossing over the, the North Saskatchewan River. I will never forget that moment. It'll live in infamy in my mind. Absolutely, yes. Uh, the call, the... Everything. It was glorious. It was beautiful. I mean, to score 70 goals in one campaign is, is something, nothing short of a miracle. So congrats. Congrats to Austin Matthews and all the Maple Leafs fans out there. You did it. You did it. Uh, Zach, where were you? He, might get, he you? might get 80. I mean, hey. At this who, point. Who, at this, at this wow. pace. I mean, Connor McDavid's on pace for 80 points this playoff season. Ceiling is the roof. How many assists? Does he have 200 already? Um, oh. Zach, did you? Um, were you? Man, I was right around... West Edmonton Mall in that great part of you know where the construction's happening for the new LRT. Oh, I'll I know never about forget. That. Yeah, uh, I think I was listening to the game on uh, iHeartRadio, and uh, yeah, I was there, man. I'll never forget. I was in my car, turn turn down the wrong turn, got stuck in a parking lot. Oh no! And I heard the Matthews goal being scored. So, in that parking lot. Great memories. You'll never uh, forget those it's cement good, girders yeah. just surrounding <laughs> you. It's good that you, you went down that, and then it gave you some time to kind of really let the moment wash over you, right? Yeah, like I stopped. Guy. You know, I, I looked over at the great construction, the beautiful view there, and then yeah, yeah. What just say took you, it all in. Lieutenant Eric? What where, say me? Where were you? Um, I think I blacked out, to be honest with you. I must have been on my way to Hudson's Bourbon Street. I uh, get it. Walking get to it. the mall. Um, but then, as usually happens when some of these big events happen, and you're in the cityscape, you hear people like yelling from their condo windows. Yes. You know, you can hear probably like a, hear people screaming from the misericordia. Erupting. Yeah, exactly. So I'm like, huh, something, something must be happening. And lo and behold, it was it was Austin Matthews scoring his 70th. And and uh, I'm sorry I missed it live, but to hear the eruption of of just fandom from across the nation at that moment was was Mr. Really something. Mister, let me out. That's what they were saying from the Miz. But you you'd confuse that with the with an Austin, you know, an Austin or a. Austin Matthews' seventieth goal celebration. It's uh, 
just having a little fun this morning, as you do. We I, we don't recognize it here. I don't, anyways. I don't oh. think EST will be recognizing the uh, the seventy, but uh, they can do what they want out in uh, out east in Sportsnet and Chris Cuthbert and and all of that stuff. Uh, question number two: uh, Which series right now is more likely heading towards a sweep, east or west? And I think we can kind of given given the events of last night. And you might know where I'm going here. I think we can nail this down to one particular one. Take a wild guess at which one I'm choosing. Carolina Islanders. D- Zach, do you want to take a guess? <laughs> well, your guess or my guess? I think... Uh, well, it's got to be... I think we're all in unison, right? It's Right? Yeah. The, right? The, hur- the Hurricanes. Yes, yes. <laughs> the, hur- the Hurricanes. Ser- <laughs> seriously, that's... Yay! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, after... <laughs> After blowing that three nothing lead, twelve shots. Come on, just that was that was terrible for the Islanders. Uh, Hurricanes are gonna sweep that one at least in my books. But uh, you know, yeah, it doesn't have to be guaranteed. But of all the series right now, I mean that, given what happened last night, you would think they're gonna go on to. That's got to be the one. I, mean, I was just I was trying to bait you into the Oilers, maybe. That is a hell of a thing for you to say to me. Anybody taking the Oilers here following last night? Seven eight zero two and eight ninety nine ninety nine. Um, in the nasty chat. That's not Mama Nielsen. Really. I I hope not. She would she wouldn't be calling herself Mum Nielsen. It'd be more like nasty nana. That's that's nasty her nana. She's, okay. She yes, to play, uh, but... Matthews didn't get seventy in the season. It's a thing we call here at the station. It's a little bit of we, a we got bit. one. We got one. We no. got one. Well, we they got... they announced on the broadcast they seventieth did. goal. So we were having a little fun with that. That's where that comes from. No, we should we should clarify. And again, we do not recognize that that mark. Here no. at EST. Nobody should. Nobody does, it's except not, the Sportsnet not the- uh, broadcast. <laughs> and if they want to write that into stone, then then we'll let them. But uh, yeah, no. Mark it, it down. I mean, I mean, it's clearly the postseason, and it's you know you're on a huge stage. This is the Maple Leafs Bruins round one. Austin Matthews scores the game winning goal. Why would you even talk about the seventieth? Like, what are you thinking? You know, you're just gonna get smashed and trashed by goofs like us out west. I mean, come on, Sportsnet. It's 2024, though, and you're looking for a little trolling, a little bit of, uh, I mean, it work, like, there's Scott no talking, way right? that they were smart enough to do that on purpose. Zero chance. Oh, that uh, that was a little bit weird. Well, what what did Matthews say? I think he said, you know, if none of those goals went in, he'd any of those, yeah, he'd have zero goals. Very prophetic. That That's some, yeah. that's some great thing. <laughs> uh, Raul uh, chimes in, 702 and 899 I think both Hurricanes and Rangers sweep. And that's a good show, too. Um, wouldn't be at all surprised to see that series going the way that it's currently going as well between New York and Washington. Uh, Josh says Dusty already called his shot. Connor for a 1,000 assists. Look, if we're playing this game, uh, shoot for the moon. He's getting that during this playoff run easily. Uh, somebody says get the Innisfail auction mark prices updates going. Yeah, that type of thing. No, I'm, I'm all for it. Toefield I, auction mark. Toefield sells a lot of livestock, a lot of small livestock. You get us a backer. We got the camera going. Jay's right here. I'll give you everything, man. He, he's got it all. He's knowledgeable. He's our guy in the uh, in the field. Pun intended. Uh, media asked Matthews in presser ab- about it after it felt scoring his 70th as well. Embarrassing. So, yeah, but again, this kind of goes back to the Vegas LTI thing. Are we, are we surprised? We're not. Let them, let them have the 70. Let them, let them gush over it. I, I, let the play on the ice do the talking and, and let the Oilers do their work and cook out here. And and we'll see where that 70 goals uh, gets the Leafs as a whole. Uh, question number three, outside of the Stanley Cup playoffs right now, what's got you in the world of sports? Well, it's got to be the NBA playoffs. Yep, that's uh, a good that's a good choice. They they are as fast paced and as exciting as as the NHL playoffs Great because of just every every night every night you get a new a new set of set of games. And, and with the Lakers down 0-2 now to the Nuggets, I mean it's a very delicious. Oh, it's beautiful! It's beautiful <laughs> to see for, Canadian Jamal Murray. Well, you, you know what? I mean, the Nuggets are the defending world champions. Absolutely. So, uh, of course, they should be beating the lowly Lakers. Two nothing. They should be up on this. Now it was a riveting game. It was a great game. You know, it's just too bad. You know, to have to have a player like LeBron with the ball in his hands and the and the game on the line just to stub his toe like that. You hate to see it. You really do. And then to have a Canadian come back and go down and kick in the game winner, baseline J. I mean, you hate to see it, Lieutenant Eric. 
you, you, you really you really hate to see I'm it. your huckleberry. Yeah, I guess my answer would be within this game and the Jokic brothers going wild in the stands and fighting people, which is, uh, there's a few videos of that out. Nothing changes with online that family. Online in the internet. But uh, no, NBA playoffs is a great shout there. Um, of course, we mentioned a little earlier on the show, and we have all summer to discuss, but the Blue Jays, victorious in their season opener down in Kansas City last night, 5-3. It's a four-game set. Uh, things will wrap up Thursday. They'll return home to host the Dodgers for a weekend set beginning Friday and running to Sunday. That's a three-game series. So, yeah, there's always something with the Jays, and they're playing decent ball right now. So, And, you know, back to the association, as we are it's an association city. I mean, how about the Knicks? You know, hanging – they're flexing their muscles. That is a not that is not an easy task facing off against the 76ers. It's a great rivalry there as well with those two teams, but I know Mark Majol will be looking forward to perhaps a little Knicks success. Well, if there's a year to do it, they've sure got the roster to to do it. They're very well. They've got very a deep streaky bench. this year too, eh? They were, but you know, it's like one of these things. I think in the NBA, when a team gets hot and they go on a run, uh as long as you can stay healthy, there's no reason to say that the Knicks won't have a chance at winning the championship. Little uh, deal as well in the NFL yesterday, and our good pal Ian Rappaport, I do believe, breaking it. He is our NFL insider during the season. But uh, the Mormon Mahomes, Zach Wilson, uh, going mile high as the Jets uh, dealing him to Denver, and the Broncos continue to do what they're whatever whatever they're doing. Um, and this is all ahead of the uh, the NFL draft, uh, which is taking place here on Thursday. So. You know, again, the Stanley Cup playoffs obviously taking precedence in this market, in this country, and, and wherever you are. I know Joel chiming in in all caps, as per usual. Nothing. I'm strictly an NHL fan until football starts. I can only commit to one sport at a time. Um, depending on where the Oilers finish, if it is a cup or nothing else, um, we really don't care about the Stanley Cup finals if it's the Tampa Bay Lightning and the and the Dallas Stars. I mean, I've did, I've seen this play out in years prior. Did you see the other caps lock on the inbox from Joel? Play eyes. I could oh, I could do that for sure. What are we at at likes? Let's 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 I'll play eyes if we set a goal here. What do we at three eighty six? Eh, let's get it to four thirty. Boom. What you time is it here. now? 8.30? We'll get it to 4.30 by the time Gage is done. And he'll be joining us uh, coming up next. One quick sports update brought to you by Big Mamas and Papa's Pizza. We'll be joined by Joaquin Gage for Pro-Am Sports following that. And if you get up to uh, 4.50 by the end of Gage, I, I can do a little of these eyes. Why not? Uh, but a, first, a sports update from uh, Jason Mill. Zach Hyman scored his first ever postseason hat trick as the Oilers went on to defeat the Kings 7 4 in game one of the Western Conference quarterfinals. Edmonton was firing all cylinders as McDavid assisted on five goals, while Dreisaitl had a goal and an assist. Stuart Skinner was also solid in net as he stopped 33 shots. Game two goes Wednesday as the Oilers look to keep things rolling. The Golden Knights manage to hold on as they take the dub against the Stars 4 3. Game two of the Eastern Conference quarterfinals saw the Leafs tie the series up with a 4-3 win over the Bruins. And the Islanders held a 3-1 lead over the Hurricanes heading into the third period and then completely fell apart, allowing three goals in the span of two minutes and eventually fell 5-3. Just in this morning, the Flyers have signed goalie Fedotov to a two-year $6.5 million extension. In the NBA, Canadian. Jamal Murray hit an insane game-winning buzzer beater to lift the Nuggets to a 101-99 victory over the Lakers. The Knicks take a 2-0 series lead over the 76ers as they win 104-101. And the Cavaliers also take a commanding 2-0 lead over the Magic with a 96-86 victory. In the Major Leagues of Baseball, the Blue Jays got their seventh win in their last nine as they beat the Royals 5-3. This sports update has been brought to you by Big Mamas and Papas Pizzeria. BMPP is a real pizzeria restaurant, not just a delivery pizza chain. Serving authentic Italian cuisine with their made-in-house pizza dough, traditional tomato sauce, and fresh toppings. Each pizza is cooked to perfection. A pizza experience you've been waiting for. Visit them at 12848 97th Street. Order today, www.bmpp.ca or call 587-746-0550. She bought a car working nights at the mall TV taught her how to drive it She bought a car, didn't want one too small Bought a K-car, reliant That other boy wasn't pushy at all She'd be the first one to tell you She wanted to try it, put the tab on the tongue 
There you have it. Edmonton Sports Talk House Band, Whale and the Wolf, going through their paces this morning. They're getting a workout. We're, uh, we're overplaying them to a degree as well. You've heard a lot <laughs> of them this morning. I may be repeating songs. What does it matter? The Oilers are victorious in game one. So it's Who a, cares? It's a celebratory day. As mentioned yesterday with Walking Gage, our next guest, um, the days of the week matter not. The, the dates that all you need to know is when, what time the puck's drops what time Tommy's on for pre and post and and wins the next game that that's pretty much what we're living in right now so and what flavor chicken wings you want <laughs> that's exactly and it, it could be multiple flavors like I was uh, experiencing last night at Hudson's but uh Welcome aboard, Dustin Nielsen, again, uh, rounding out a family vacation down in San Diego. He's back on the show Thursday. Lieutenant Eric in, Jason Milne, Glue Guy, Zach again behind the monitors. It's the Popeye's Louisiana Kitchen Studio. Get your texts in as well. Jay's monitoring the inbox this morning, the Paris Jewelers Bling Box, 780-218-9999. We do have $20 to a on the line for text of the day, so... Get on in, swoop in, see if you can uh, steal the deal uh, late here in the show. And I did promise as well, if we get to 450 likes on the Nasty Chat on YouTube, uh, we'll get a little of these eyes, uh, the Dallas Aikens remix. So why not? And that's going to be by the end of our conversation with our next guest, Joaquin Gage. And he is brought to you by, as always, Pro-Am Sports, your locally owned sports memorabilia and apparel specialists. You can find them just north of the Yellowhead on St. Albert Trail, 128th Ave, or visit them online, proamsports.ca. Like you, they are Sports nerds and AM nasties too. As we welcome in Joaquin Gage, I got to say, Joaquin, you and I doing Tales of the North yesterday for the very first time. Uh, the Oilers one and zero within that era. So congratulations and thank you for doing that yesterday. You'll be back with me tomorrow, setting up Game Two. But just let's dive into this one. I want to get your overall thoughts and the theme and the mood for you coming out of that game. Did it change anything? Prior to the game, you're heading into game one. You have your thoughts, how the series is going to go. The game happens. What are your thoughts waking up this morning on the entire series coming out after that game one win? Um, morning, boys. Good to good to see you. Um, to me, personally, watching that game, it felt it felt like that wasn't the, the real Los Angeles Kings team. And I... I don't want to take anything away from the the Oilers' victory by any means, but f- looking at it uh, through the lens of a goaltender, um, there were a lot of those goals I didn't like from Talbot. I I thought the first two goals that he allowed from from Rico and uh, Zach Hyman were stoppable pucks, and those are the types of saves that you need, especially especially when it's game one going into another team's barn. We've seen it all across basically Canada with the with these uh, Canadian teams, how they start, uh, the intensity. Uh, you're going to have to weather the storm for that first 10 minutes. Um, so, again, I don't want to take anything away from the Oilers' victory. I thought they played a, a really good, disciplined hockey game, which was very encouraging. There were times when the there was no none of those retaliation penalties that I saw. They, they, they took a number. When, when things went wrong and, and tried to exact their revenge later on in the game a little bit. So great. Like that's the sign of a mature, a mature hockey team on the, on the other side, the, uh, the Kings didn't, they, they were, they were all over the place trying to in scrums, taking bad penalties. Uh, I loved the, when coach Woodcroft would talk about the power play being part of our toughness and it, and it definitely was, well, when Woodcroft was here, but he, yeah. he mentioned it was part of our toughness that, you know, if you do do something stupid against us, we're, we're going to make you pay on the power play. And that's what the Oilers did. Well, and you mentioned, and I think goaltending was obviously a question coming into this one, specifically Cam Talbot. Um, and, and, and I just guess the quality between him and Riddich as well. It's nothing on the Kings that I think Oilers fans uh, lessening on the concern scale in terms of their forwards, their grittiness, and what have you. Um, but your thoughts again, and, and you you have played the, the game and the position and the discipline. And Stuart Skinner last night, I thought early on he had a, a good point blank save on Kevin Fiala. And again, it's game one, and, and we know things in this market can kind of you know, really early on and, and you know, a, a greasy goal here or something. But I thought in that moment, and, and I know maybe a few goals greasy from the Kings later on, you know, a kick in, you know, that type of thing. But I think Skinner, numbers aside, uh, from start to back, had a pretty pretty good night. Fair? Oh, yeah. Like you you mentioned the Fiala save. Un- great save on Fiala. And those are the... Like that's nothing what spectacular or flashy, but just uh, but doing what you have to do. I- there's there's little subtle saves that maybe 
maybe I see that that recognize them as as di- a lot more difficult than than they actually are. That was one of them, like being able to control the rebound, put it way out of harm's way. Like that was, and that's a that's a moment in the game where you know um, if you recognize it, Oilers are pressing. Kings come back, get an opportunity, and it gets snuffed out by your goaltender. That's what I'm talking about with Talbot. Those first two goals against, those are stoppable pucks. That's uh, and that's essentially that. That was the game right there. Two goals down. That's uh, you're we're we're talking. We could be talking about something completely different if he makes those two saves. Um, the other save that uh, that that was phenomenal in a key moment was the Arvidsson breakaway. Oh, yeah. Just like, yeah just a piece of his pad right and it's and it's not a big flashy you know glove save or firing out the blocker it was just perfectly positioned and just moving slightly to 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 get a piece of that puck and make it go wide fantastic save and you could only really admire it in in super slow-mo but that was another point where skinner you know the 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 tide of the game could have could have changed drastically, and he comes up with a huge save. That's what that's what NHL goaltending. That's what playoff goaltending is all about: recognizing the situation you're in, making sure that the 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 momentum, the momentum swings don't go right the other way. Um, as for the goals against, I mean, what do you? I don't look at many of them. I maybe the uh, the uh, uh, who was it? Uh, uh, Mikey Anderson or whatever his name is, yep. the the slew footer guy. Four, he, <laughs> I, I didn't like his goal too much, but I can understand it. Maybe trying to, you know, he, he there was a little bit of a moving screen there. Um, the rest are lack of better terms, just a fluky, fluky goals. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure you can for for Skinner the what what we've seen from him this year, he can put those in the rearview mirror and not really worry about them going forward. So, uh, Gager, I just wanted to ask, you know, going into game two. No. Uh, <laughs> no I'm kidding. <laughs> I'm a little on edge here, okay? <laughs> just hang on. I'm going to get to this. You don't, you're not off the hook yet. You son of a yeah. All right, all right, all right. Gager, going into game two. Uh, serious, okay? Serious. What do the Kings have to do to now get back into this series. I mean, obviously they need to have a split here in Edmonton to have any, you know, plausible chance of, of getting this series back into a, uh, something that's would, would rectify as a, a competitive series. I mean, the physicality was there. I thought last night from the LA Kings, was it just that they were outmatched and out, uh, I guess the start of the game, the first period got away on them pretty quick. What do you see the Kings needing to do? And as a follow up follow up question to that, which I'd like you to answer, ask you uh, answer after. Do you like me? <laughs> I I love you. I uh, just uh, on our personal relationship. Yeah, I'm I'm making you sweat to Thank not you. respond yeah. to you in our text line. And I know it, it, like it's uh, it's uh, I'm playing hard to want. Uh, I like so it. Just, I like uh, it. Foot. Uh, whatever. <laughs> no, we're 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 good buddies. Um, so I mentioned the. The discipline that has to be changed first of all. Um, I I, it, I found it interesting that they would the Kings tried to implement this this after the whistle toughness where um, that really caused them issues. Uh, I I mean I like Kopitar. Um, I, I think that uh, I, Fiella the buzzsaw um, Arvidsson just a great game, but. Um, for this team to do anything, uh, uh, Dubois has to show up and do something. I know he scored a goal, but, but it was he, completely him, ridiculous. Even him skating by the bench, I mean, the guy looks totally just demeanor-wise uninterested. We talked about it with with uh, Craig Button um, yesterday, and, and just looking at that trade, I'd love to survey all 32 GMs and – and look at that and see if they would make that trade again. That's just, and I know the regular season, it's done, whatever. It, it's a it's a reset, and this is where I thought we would see Dubois kind of raise his game and, and go, okay, it doesn't matter what's happened the last 82. 83 is where it counts, and he was essentially non-existent except for a, for a, for a very lucky bounce. Um, they're going to have to, they're going to need way more from him. 
This is why he got there. This is that strength throughout the middle that that um, that Grant, Dusty, myself, Eric, like we were all talking about this at the beginning of the year, thinking, "My gosh, this is going to be very tough." Hell of a spine. Playoff yep. time. Yep. Yeah, and uh, and it's just not there. So, but saying all this, it's going to be a very different Kings team that we see on on Wednesday. I I think it's going to be a a, a little bit more close checking way more discipline they're going to know that we cannot allow that power play to get on multiple times just just being able to feel good passing the puck around it's 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 almost a hindrance just allowing them to to have uh, offensive zone time because you start feeling better about yourself and and the Oilers have done a great job although they they don't have the same power play effectiveness which is still a Great power play, don't get me wrong, but it's the fact that they've been able to build momentum off a of power play, even if they don't score. You watch their next shift. They're, the the next guys next guys up are usually having a, a really good shift after the power play. So it's giving the other teams momentum. But um, yeah, I'm looking forward to Wednesday, um, and hopefully Zach Hyman can get his... Uh, Get his 58th, 59th, and 60th goal of the season. <laughs> we'll be waiting. Hey, I just want to get your thoughts, too, on that Trevor Moore and Vincent Deharnay. I mean, we're talking about the uh, the rough stuff and the ugly stuff. Um, your thoughts on the Moore. I mean, he's coming to the side. I'm watching this now, slow motion replay over and over and over again, kind of into that Oakwood knee of, of Vincent Deharnay. But I, I don't think he's too seriously injured. A little worse for after that. But your thoughts on that? Any punishment due, do you forecast, coming down from the, the head offices today? Well, as uh, we don't have to look too far back in the uh, in recent history to know that regular season outcomes are are completely different in yep. in the playoffs, yep. and it, that is a to me that's an intent to injure again. That's a low hit. Um, it's gutless. Uh, you're you're trying to injure someone at that point. It's a dangerous, dangerous hit. And uh, there should be, to me, and, in the regular these season, questions, that should though, be Yeah, it's years. what you think and what you think the league will do. We always have to preface with that well, because I think what we, we think is, a, yeah. No one knows what the league will yeah, yeah. do. Well, that's, that's the that's thing. The answer, right? yeah. No one knows. So it could be anywhere between a $5,000 fine and a, and a three-game suspension. Yeah. To me, that should be a game because you tried to injure someone. May At least, at least it should be a fine. Um, but again, that's a... I, I, I did not like that hit one bit. Yeah. Uh, Joaquin Gage joining us, courtesy Pro-Am Sports this morning, as he'll be uh, in the chair replacing Jason Milne tomorrow. We'll be setting up Game 2, Oilers and Kings, Gager, and other Tales of the North. We're looking to go 2-0 and at the segment, uh, kind of running Dusty out of a bit of a gig here on his own show. I love it. Um, is there anything between the two of you that you want to clear the air here before we uh, let Gager go about his day? I mean, you guys are it's all good with the texting. and the. No, we... Uh, we um... Milne and I are gonna we're gonna have a six o'clock or lager. Yeah. Hopefully, maybe Wednesday night. Um, we'll try to we'll tell our wives that we're doing something completely different. Hey. And uh, you and know what I want? Try. I want a I want a, a two stack a two pad stack pill. Yeah, that oh, pi- oh that looked like a good supper there last night. Yeah. Why don't you, hey? I don't know if everybody knows. I know you had it last week uh, on on Friday, yeah. but. Uh, Gager had this uh, this beautiful libation that he's, he's made in his own house. Very he's smooth. using special yeasts, and yeah. my gosh, that's who knew? Who knew you were a man of so many talents? I'm uh, I'm not excellent at at one thing, but I'm good <laughs> at a lot of things. Yes. Well, let's just say that. That's yes. that's why we love you, Gager, and uh, we uh, look forward to uh, joining you the morning show again tomorrow in Dustin Nielsen's instead. Uh, enjoy the rest of your day, and then uh, we'll uh, chat tomorrow. I'll, I'll send you a little text later on. I'll let you know who I am as well. Can't wait. There you have it. Walking Gauge brought to you by Pro-Am Sports. Your locally owned sports memorabilia and apparel specialists. You can check them out just north of the Yellowhead, St. Albert Trail, 128th Avenue. Uh, they love a good talk. Head on in there. Chat it up with the boys. Game one last night. They want nothing more than to get some fan fan opinion in the shop this morning. It's a water cooler shop. Get in there. Get some Oilers memorabilia. Hey, if you tossed your hat on the ice last night. Head on down to Pro Am, and we'll get some headgear back on that, back on that uh, cue ball of yours. One twenty eighth Ave. Visit them online as well. ProAmSports.ca. Like you, they are sports nerds and AM nasties too. And as mentioned, Joaquin Gage uh, back tomorrow. 
with myself and YouTube Trev getting you set for game two and Dusty back on the show Thursday morning. So we appreciate Joaquin's time today as well. You feel like everything's fine now. You've you've gotten your thing. It's all oh, good. You explained. Now what, you can rest. What That's a nice. load oh, off my oh, shoulders. Yeah, my yeah. gosh. When you know your childhood hero just abandons you on text and um no, I, I, I figured that uh, the gauge was was just being uh, the veteran in the locker room, you know, teaching the young pup and uh, putting me on ice. I, I appreciate it. Yeah. I love the camaraderie, and I can't wait to uh, to enjoy that six o'clock or lager with you, big fella. You as glue, you've been you've been liquefied again. You were you were a, you were a rigid glue stick earlier on. You were kind of tight, yeah. but now this is kind of you're back in. This is a nice. This glue. is a nice two part epoxy. That's the glue right we now. like. Yeah, 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 that's the yeah. glue we like. Nasty chads to lighten up. Gager and the, uh, I, we're like a two part epoxy. Th- Put us I, together and good things happen. I'm here for this burgeoning relationship. I really am. I, I want to see where this goes. I, I really be. enjoy it. Um, if Moore is in the lineup for game two, Carrick lets him know he has to answer and set the tone by kicking his ace. That comes in from Wildcast Podcast in the nasty chat. And TV Burkle chimes in. The Kings traded basically their entire second line for PLD. And it's still one that, I mean, it's it's when you look at that lineup now and, and PLD's in there and you think of what they gave up, it's like you... It's like you take a big bite out of a lemon. You know, you look at that and you're just like, ooh, like you just kind of get a bit of a shiver. It's uh, what could have been. They they were doing such a good job of roster building and building this thing that kind of nullified the Oilers and their explosiveness. And I think that done, that one kind of sets you back a couple of steps. Uh, it, you tried it, you tried for a you, swing. You tried, you tried to do something. something. Sure. You tried to do but, something man. which was to bring in that agitator scorer type role. Um, and, and it... As of right now, and and I, I believe it was talked about uh, uh, with with Rashad yesterday morning uh, to bring him in and have him be that playoff game changer for the LA Kings, where they could say, "Okay, PLD, this is where we need you. This yep. is where you are to step up." And and he got the message, but it, it dearly cost his team last night. And it'd be interesting to see how that goes. As Gager says, they're going to have to cool their jets a bit on this physical play because they cannot hand over power play after power play to this unit. I what, mean, what it, else it, they got though? <laughs> you know what I mean? Well, it's a, they're going to have to find a way. Them or, yeah, and, and and even as I mentioned too, and I mean, I know the PLD goal last night makes it six three, and and you know. <laughs> Chuck up those goals, however you like. Not not necessarily just you know top notch skill or anything, like that, but even him skating by the bench, I just thought in demeanor. And it's it's game one. It's you've you've cut the score in half. You're probably not coming back to win or anything, but you're you want to still have a feeling that the series isn't over. And when he skates by the bench, I mean teammates, yeah, whatever. And it's just kind of this seems flat. And that's why my opinion of this whole series kind of changed post game last night because I really think the Oilers kind of. Put the boots in here. Now, again, the Kings won't be an easy out. I'm not saying that. Uh, but I'm just saying they may have to just resort to that physical s- style and just bang crash, and, and that's how it's going to go, and the series might end for them sooner rather than later. You know, as, as we you know near the end of, of, of today's show, and, and you can say that that was a different feeling after the Oilers took that victory. Last night, I think so. Then, I mean, obviously, we get the game one stigma. Nobody was scared, but there was there was concern. There has to be concern. You're entering the playoffs. Everybody's in there for a right. reason. There's good. I don't think any scaredness from the from the LA Kings. And but. some, you know, a few of the goals that the Kings got aren't going to carry them through this series. Those were not goals that were goal, goal scorers' goals. And yes, Talbot is Talbot didn't look uh, his greatest. Um, but that's the goalie they're riding with. So that's who we're, you know, the Oilers are, are going to be facing for the next, hopefully, three games. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I feel there's an air of, of you can breathe. There the was Oilers a window didn't open, squeak one yeah, out yeah, there. Yeah. They actually went out and dominated and won and took the game. Absolutely. Um, we're getting close here. Uh, we're, what are we, big 12 fella. away here, and then we're really jammed up against the clock. 8.53, we're going to get into the ramp here for William Huff. If you want your place to look as good as ours, visit the team at <laughs> WilliamHuff.com. In business since 1972, so you know they're incredible what they do. WilliamHuff.com. And with that, I mean, Jay, you were great on the pom-poms this morning. You were shaking them like a like a son of God. If you did miss the opening hour and the opening of the show, do yourself a favor. Rewind. These pom-poms were working. Live out those vibes. Um, oh, yeah. 
Palm Palms, of course, courtesy William Huff. And uh, if you want, it's not too late. You can uh, visit them today as well or online, williamhuff.com. Uh, you can check them out in person as well. Banners, Pom Poms, the whole bit. Dickled stickers. Uh, they got you covered. And it's a pro look. It's a great look. So not too late. Get your uh, get your paraphernalia for Game 2, courtesy. Get your stickers. William Huff. William Huff. Zach, you've been asked to put this on your hat. Oh, he's got the, yeah, he's got the Nike logo there. And, you know. I would, but I don't want to waste a good sticker. It wouldn't stick on my, my hat for too long. Smart move. Smart man. move. Yeah. Veteran. You Veteran. Do Didn't take the bait. Good um, to see. Uh, getting into the rap here and what we learned on the show this morning, and I think I'll turn it over to Zach to him this morning as he provided us with a piece of information uh, coming out of Philadelphia. And, Zach, please take this time, this brief moment in time, to uh, educate our listeners and viewers on, on your uh uh, opportunity here at Edmonton Sports Talk coming up. Yeah, for sure. Uh, starting this Sunday, the VIP Golf Show is coming back to Edmonton Sports Talk, and I'll be behind the monitor producing the show. Uh, of course, that's hosted by Murray McCourt, the owner of the Ranch uh, Golf and Country Club. So I learned that today, and uh, you guys did as well. So uh, tune in every Sunday, 8 to 10 a.m. Love it, love it. And uh, the Philadelphia Flyers and their large, large goaltender. Uh, yeah, they made, a, I guess, a big signing with uh, big boy Ivan <laughs> Fedotov, uh, signing him to a two-year extension worth $3.25 million average each year. So $6.5 million uh, bucks for the big boy uh, out in Philly. And uh, so... Very much. Thank you for that, Zach. Uh, getting that uh, Flyers news plus your, uh, your your another gig here at EST. Uh, did we have a text of the day this morning, Jay? Courtesy our friends at uh, A and W. Twenty dollars to A and W. They got the single, double, or triple stacker starting at three ninety nine. You can get it today to cure your game one hang hangover. But uh, what did we get from that Paris Jewelers inbox this morning, Jay? We did. We did. We we had an entry come in at eight twenty four by one Darth two. Darth two. Last night, Cam Talbot was leakier than glue guy's goat fence. And that's the truth. Oh, that's too soon, hey? Does that's that, the, how does that make you feel? Is that's that, the God honest you'll truth. You'll admit it's true, but it, it makes you feel... It really makes me hurt. So what's the deal here? What's the next step with this fence? Like we got to solidify the perimeter, and uh, we've got a I'll fence that down. needs to be tightened on the bottom. It's a, it's a page wire fence, yeah. and uh, it's curled up at the bottom. So we need to, we need to tighten the bottom wire and... Uh, Hammer in some post nails, and and we'll have it made in the shade in no time. Now, is this a full family, all hands on deck? Like you come over the intercom, uh, DefCon, whatever, and then your daughters and everybody rush. Like this is a full, or this, or is this just a lead hand? This is a daddy job, and everybody watches. No, everybody's from the window, got their roles. They fun. know when the alarm sounds in the house that one girl's to get the hammer, one girl's to get the nail. I love this. One girl's goes get the fencing pliers. Uh, Do April, you call it a compound? Well, of course, commune, compound. I you love know. It. It's a, well. I'll, I'll I'll get into it another day, but we're big things are changing in the neighborhood. <laughs> I'm just telling you, it's it, it's a changing of the guard for you in in terms of the furniture. Well, and, 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 and my mother in law, my dearest mother in law, uh, is 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 staying with us right now. She's she's moving back uh, east, you could say. Yep. So she's going to be staying with us, and and I'm just so happy. It's it's one of the. You know, you always hear about that that stigma. Of, Are you serious? Uh, no, I'm okay. dead serious. Because I'm, I'm dead you serious. Pouring it, I'm so happy as you can stay. No, no, no. <laughs> I love my mother-in-law. She is a sweetheart. She's. Uh, it's. It, we're going to be so happy to have her. It's. 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 It is weird though. You. You know the stigma of. Absolutely. Oh, my mother-in-law. My, my, no, not 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 my dearest Colleen. She is an angel. She's a sweetheart. She's going to be staying with us now. I. We can't be happier as a family. So, you know, the EST welcomes you, Colleen. Let's go! Yeah. Gold yes. nuggets. Um, <laughs> we are six likes away. You're not going to do this, are you? Like it's not. We're not going to. We're not going to sit here. Five likes away. Five likes. And I, I mentioned I would play the uh, the eyes song. The these eyes or the uh, the eyes remix. Um, I do have the these eyes as well. That's what we're going to be doing. That's that will be the song if we can unlock and hit that 450 like threshold. You got a couple minutes to go. Hangout coming up next. Uh, I'll be dotting that uh, show as well. Nine to eleven with Matt. I want a coasting myself. YouTube Trev Zactigum will all be peppered in there. It'll be your next chance to qualify for our Fly Yeg Yeg uh, trip to Vegas. The nonstop flights courtesy Fly Yeg. Your next chance coming up during the hangout nine to eleven, um, and then also following that on the lock shop and two guys later on today as well and we'll be calling a qualifier on friday so not a lot of days not a lot of shows left uh but be listening for that word that'll be coming up during the hangout we nailed it got it 
ladies and gentlemen. We got them. Uh, mission accomplished there. Good job, Nasties. Round of clicks and, uh, for the pat nasties. yourself on the back. What's this? Round of clicks for the Nasties. Whatever you want to do. Uh, here we go. It's going out to Rip City Step. He narrowed his eyes and said, I'm taking this, and, and it's going in the net. These eyes. It's fun to watch him. Cry every night. I saw it in his eyes. For you, you. These arms. He, he's been uh, a horse for us. They long to hold you, hold you again. He narrowed his eyes. The hurtings on the air. I saw it in his eyes. It's fun to watch him. You broke it. You broke it. Oh, no. His eyes narrow and him dig his heels in and, and basically say, I'm going to change this game now. These eyes. Watch. I know that's not the one you were looking for. <sighs> eyes. You know what? I saw it in his eyes. Eyes. It's fun to watch his eyes. Eyes. And, you know, he narrowed his eyes. He's been uh, a horse. His eyes narrow. I saw it in his eyes. He loves his eyes. Eyes. It's going in the net. Horse eyes. People were highly critical of his eyes. His eyes narrow. There you go. There you go. I gave you both of them. Isn't that something this morning? Uh, hungry eyes, these eyes, all the eyes this morning as the Oilers victorious last night, game one. Getting by the Kings 7-4. to four. It's going to do it for the Nielsen Show. Lieutenant Eric, Jason Milne, once again, thank you so much, man, for your time and all this over the next little while. Uh, it's not the last we'll see of you. And again, if you want to, uh, the farm report or whatever it is with uh, <laughs> glue guy Jay Milne, uh, business at Edmonton Sports Talk for sure. But uh, thanks for your time, man, coming in early mornings and all that. My and pleasure. I have such a blast. It's Zach so much fun. Come, Zach, come behind the monitors. YouTube Trev will be back uh, tomorrow morning. Joaquin Gage as well with me. Dusty will be back on the show Thursday. I want to thank our guests this morning, TSN's Darren Dreger, Joaquin Gage, as well, both for Pro Am Sports, for all of our sponsors, the Popeyes Louisiana Kitchen Studio, uh, AW Paris Jewelers, the inbox was humming today, and you nasties, fantastic job, fantastic job at hitting the like threshold. Um, enjoy the day. And once again, game two tomorrow. It's not a Wednesday, it's a game two day. So enjoy yourself, recoup, recover. We'll be back ready to go tomorrow. Uh, hangout coming up next, 9 to 11. Matt Iwanek, your next chance at the Vegas Fly YEG keyword as well, coming up during that show. Have a great day.